to the Archon Team League Championships. Uh, Crip currently went stealth. Uh, he's right now just getting a break, but we just want to go ahead and welcome you back into the next segment, which is the second match of the day. We have Value Town versus Cloud9. Now, uh, for Team Value Town, that doesn't sound like a team that you normally know, um, but it sounds familiar based off of one person. It's Trump. And we decided to make him a team captain. He's decided to pick up guys like Dog from Team Complexity, who doesn't have a super well-established team in Hearthstone. He does have teammates like Noxious and Super JJ, but you don't really consider like a, a full team lineup the way you think of you know, Cloud9 or, or Archon. And he's also picked up Brian Kibler, who's also gone solo for a long time. So we feel like these team of All-Stars will be really cool to watch. Not to mention that guys like Dog, always innovating his decks, and Kibler as well. And also another innovator who decided to join us is Crip. Hey. How's it going, Crip? Good. Sorry. Cool. I was busy. No problem. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, the rag flip um, was really cool. Um, yeah. I don't know if you comment, commented on that. It was my game from like a year and a half ago or something ridiculous. <laughs> I, think it was, I think it was back when it was 9-0 uh, Arena. Like that was the most you could get. Oh, man. That was a really long time ago then. Yeah. Oh, Top wow, deck wow. Ragnaros when I'm at 8 life and it hits mm -hmm. me through 7 creatures. And I'm like, yeah. Does 8 damage. Classic. Is that not what it's supposed to do? I think Ragnaros is supposed to hit 8 to the face every time you're at 8 or below. Oh, man. That's yeah. kind of what happens. Um, Cloud9, by the way, they do have a pretty strong lineup um, overall outside of just even the three you see. People forget that Nimsh actually still plays as well in tournaments uh, from time to time. And then yeah. they do have <clears throat> a pretty strong arena player also in Hafu. And they have Tides of Time, who's uh, a great constructed player when he tries to be, uh, always citing motivation issues and assertiveness. But when you mm -hmm. look at these three players, I think Shrevko, Kalento, Ecop, they're also players that you don't get too surprised seeing making deep runs in tournaments. Yeah, uh, Shrevko and Kalento, uh, I think, have showed a little bit more success than Ecop in the past. But Ecop, Ecop has been there. Uh, he's had some highlights. Um, I think in recent times, he's kind of struggled a little bit to place well. Uh, he's kind of makes it a little bit in a tournament and then kind of falls just short of, uh, you know, the final few rounds. But uh, we've mostly seen a very solid play from him. And uh, he's, he's one, of the, one of the oldest players in the game. And he's, I mean, he's always been there. So uh, extremely strong lineup from Cloud9. I think I do have to, uh, I do have to give it to them, though. Uh, even though I love, I love the Valley Towns. Love my boy Trump. Uh, Dog is one of the one of the best players in the game this moment. Um, yeah, I feel like as as a group, the Cloud Nine guys have quite an edge here. Okay, uh, I I would say so based off of the fact that I think Cloud Nine guys are not afraid to play what's great, and I feel like there's almost this weird burden on some guys like Kibler sometimes to bring something unique and new, and that's mm -hmm. where Conquest can really punish you because if you bring something that's not fully fleshed out and consistent yet, then you end up getting the wrong under the stick where you just, you know, maybe your weaknesses get exposed a little bit and they find out some tech cards and then you lose and you keep losing because you have to play more with it and they find out a bit more weaknesses of your deck. Uh, so this is why oftentimes Conquest is a format where it's very dangerous to introduce really weird concepts um, in decks. And one of them already, we have Shaman from Brian Kibler. Uh, yeah. This guy, I don't know, man. I'm not sure. I don't know either, but we'll see. We'll see. There is There are some pretty typical Shaman decks that do kind of work right now. So we'll have to see how that works. That's um, true. The mech Strife Shaman. Crow, right? Strife Crow is bringing Mage and Pally, which were the two unique classes uh, in uh, the prior matchup that we had uh, earlier. So it, there's a there's bit more innovation uh, mm -hmm. in, in this matchup than in the yeah. last. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see it. But uh, before we get into it, uh, let's uh, let's check out one of uh, let's check out one of the players. Hey, my name is Kong Shu. Uh, my gamer tag is Strife Crow. I'm playing for Cloud Nine. I guess I'm mostly known for just being pretty consistent. I've been in the scene for a long time. I don't know at this point if there's like any you know one thing that I'm known for or even any one deck. Uh, a long time ago, maybe it used to be Druid, but you know, I, I didn't even play too much Druid in a while, like when Paladin came out in Blackrock. Yeah, so the format of this team league is really cool. Uh, after hearing about it, I'll, I like it a lot. I really wanted a format where it was not just three one-on-ones and like whichever team had you know two victors or, or more would win. I like how it's 
more of a team effort. I think the strongest deck at the moment, I mean, I, it's hard, it's really hard for me to say one, but I think it's very close between like Warlock, Hunter, and Warrior. And I don't, I can't even say which, like, you know, which exact class, because even Warrior, I'm not even sure what the best Warrior one is, if it's Controller, Patron, or Zoo, or Handlock. All right, to all my fans that are gonna be watching me in the league, keep watching me, support me, watch my stream, sub to me on YouTube, all the good stuff. <laughs> but yeah, thanks for, thanks for being a fan. We got, we got that like sneak peek there. Did you see the, the panda strife crow? Yeah, I got a little glimpse of that for sure. <laughs> uh, I, I, I can't wait to see how more of the art ends up panning out. But more importantly, I want to see what the players think of their own art because I feel like some of them might not be fairly That's represented. That's true. Yeah. I, want, I wish they would interview them after showing them the art and asking them if they think it's accurate or not. And if so, why not? We need, um, like, or why? We need like a, a voted on best and worst art from the players and best and worst <laughs> art from the community. And we'll see how those compare. <clears throat> For sure. Yeah, I think that'd be really cool too. And probably really appropriate if uh, we could do that towards the end of the season as well. Also, I just want to make a brief little comment here on the Value Town logo. It's, um, at first, I, I wasn't sure what it was. <laughs> and then I just realized it's Trump Towers with a dollar sign on it. So that, that's, that's what it is, Towers? right? I don't know. It's just a dollar sign. Yeah. Is that how the Trump like Towers symbolizing look? how Trump oh. like is. Kind of like Donald Trump and how it's a stack you know, of value. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And I don't know. Maybe he wants to be president too, but it might not work out. Who knows? Mm -hmm. I don't think Trump's a Republican though. Taking a look at the uh, lineups overall, I, the two things stick out to me. One is the shaman from Brian, but the second thing is no, no druid, druid is represented yeah. at all. Not at all. Uh, druid is a class that I think a lot of players regard as inconsistent, and. Um, I'm not surprised to see this case from Value Town, but I'm a bit surprised to see the case from Cloud9. Um, I think it's, it's, a, it's a good tournament deck overall. Um, I think in the like fabricated teams, like uh, Value Town is, for instance, um, again, I think that element of risk uh, some players are not willing to take. Holy cow! <laughs> That's Kibler the Vampire versus Kalento the Pirate. That is the next expansion, in fact. Archon League... Revealing Vampires Blizzard versus secrets. Pirates. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I would play a lot of that expansion because I'd want to kill the vampires every time. But the whole point is that Kibler's supposed to be a dragon trainer, right? Because he's got the whelp on his shoulder. Or is I that a that, whelp? That, that all, yeah, it is. But that also means he's supposed to play priest, which he's not. So I don't know. Yeah, that's true. Um, fabulous hair, though. 10 out of 10. They got that correct. <laughs> God. He kind of right. looks a little like James Vanderbeek in this picture. What about Kalento? Like, I don't know how fitting he is as the pirate. He doesn't yeah. seem like the eccentric type. <laughs> it's supposed to be an inside joke, though, with, I think, um, the Pistolotov or whatever, in how yeah. Kalento kind of looks like that, and then the pirates thing. So. That's the joke. Hope you guys laughed and had fun. And that's part of what this whole point is. But now it's time to get a little bit more serious as we have Kibler versus Kalento. We have the Shaman versus the Warrior. And this is the Patron Warrior, which is supposed to capitalize on Shaman as one of the weak classes against this, primarily because you always have these small targets mm -hmm. that uh, ends up buffing the Frothing Berserker. But we also talked about how it might not be Midrange Shaman, it might be Mech Shaman. This is exactly. Job's done. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. All right. Well, Mech Shaman is an okay deck. Um, I think if you get that pressure early on, uh, it can do just fine against Grim Patron Warrior. But uh, we'll see. Well, I would say it would do okay if it curved well, but now that it's going to be hero power two turns in a row. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, well, first things first. Um, can Kibler say that Klento's not holding a Fiery War Axe? Because he would have put, coined it out the, the previous turn, right? Yeah. So, if he knows his opponent doesn't have Fiery War Axe, is it safe to play this Flame Tongue Totem? Flame Tongue into, like, a Taunt Totem into the mech to kill the Armorsmith? 
Yeah, or you can even attack Armor Smith now so that Inner Rage and Cool Taskmaster don't get value. Or if you feel like he plays Control Warrior, then you have to be careful. That's actually, that's actually a good point. We don't know if it's... Um, I think Colento in the recent past has been showing up to tournaments with Patron Warrior. And I think that's kind of expected too, so I I think this is pretty fair assumptions. Um, whirlwind. I guess if you're making that attack, it's a whirlwind. No? Oh, oh Battle Rage. Yeah, the, the Battle just Rage doesn't want to be taken for free. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Well, he does get to um, use his totem to kill off. That's a nice little caveat there. So yeah. he can keep the Cogmaster alive. Yeah, and that's that's one of the bonuses, the the one one totem. Sometimes it's just the best totem. Very rarely the case, but uh, sometimes it is, and sometimes you just keep getting it. I know. Yeah, there was wasn't one that video one guy? Yeah, yeah like six dude. in a row or something. <laughs> no, I think it was like wasn't it absurd? Like eight times in a row, and he said like I'll concede if he gets it one more time at the very last one, and they got yeah, it. Yeah, and he did. <laughs> that's good manners, man. Okay. Well, that's a pretty good draw, the Power Maze. That allows him to stabilize the early game board and then not lose his Flame Tongue Totem, guaranteed. Mm. You think well, the Shredder's better? He's not guaranteed to lose it here. Uh, it's, I don't mm. know if the Shredder's better, but really when you're playing an aggressive deck, if you don't know what's better, you will play what's on curve. That's a good point. Because um, then you're able to at least fill it out the rest of the game according to your mana usage here. And you do have that fell reaver next turn so it's not exactly that you need the buff for the weapon on turn four your opponent's usually playing things like um no mission vendor though and you still can remove it while playing the pilot shredder so i'm okay with playing this power move. yep okay well the whirlwind um is there much of a play here i think you just weapon up you might consider not playing the uh the taunt even though it's free you don't really want to give him an, an extra excuse to use the weapon, I feel. Yep. Kalento thinks the same. Fail Reaver, well, boys. Yep. Yeah, this I think is. You don't attack with your weapon, though. That creature's big enough. Yeah, it's still susceptible to Big Game Hunter and Execute. Both of which, uh, you're not expecting this Fail Reaver to do too much initially. But it sets up so that way your, your threats the following turns are going to be just as devastating. Because you're going to have like a 6-7 or a 6-5 with Death Rattle Summons. Ooh. Clint is like, oh that. my god. Oh, wow. He looked really stressed over that. He's okay, though. I think he'll be fine. In the end, he's got ways to draw cards. But this yeah, for all, we know, for all we know, Kalento like teched out executes for like some more combo cards. And he's like, huh. oh my god. It happened. No way. You, you wouldn't take out executes. <laughs> no, sure. you wouldn't. No way. <laughs> it's like that guy that forgot Grim Patron in his patron deck. He was putting <laughs> so many whirlwind effects and stuff, he like forgot to put Grim Patron in the deck itself. Yeah. Well, he can deal with it here. It just sucks. It's a lot of damage to take. You take eight to your own face. Blood and uh, he does get to draw two off of Battle Rage, though. I forgot about that. Or three rat. Uh, I wasn't paying attention to what got milled. Was there anything noteworthy at all? Yeah, the other Fell Reaver. Okay. Oh, he plays two Lava Burst. Wow, this is a very burst centric deck here with a lot of burn. Mm -hmm. So. And one thing I've like almost never seen is Silence in this Grim Patron deck. Well, you don't really need silence as much. You got weapon removal and executes mm -hmm. that help you get past taunts. I think that makes it so the um, the shredder is stronger target to buff mm -hmm. than the uh, yeti. Often, this would not be the case. Yeah, I agree. Is there a scenario where the Yeti would be stronger against this deck? I don't think so. I think the Shredder is just really important because you keep something on board. Yeah, if it if you get like um, uh, what's it called Emperor next turn. Ah, you're right. Because then it makes it cheaper. No, Emperor just kills it. So you have to use Lava Burst to so screw up Ragnaros. Oh, you're talking about the other way. Right, okay. 
makes sense. Yeah. <clears throat> Clinto picks up the Fiery War Axe here. Not the most useful card. Does he feel like he has to use Execute here? He, he's not yeah. sure because it feels like... I like Whirlwind Execute. Execute. I even like it with the uh, Acolyte up. Well, you guys, he wants to set up Death Spite here, so you will use a Death Spite to answer whatever comes out. You think so? I think he's going to do the uh, Loot Hoarder Fire War X. Because yeah, the Death guess... Spite doesn't really help right now. Yeah, I suppose so. You do set up the Whirlwind Effect for next turn, though, so that Acolyte could get value. And you can also answer whatever 5 health minion comes out. But it does, uh, now that you saw whatever comes out of the Shredder, you can go for that Loot Hoarder play. And it does the similar damage as it would for, um... Okay. The Death Spite. Similar idea here. Mm -hmm. Loot Hoarder would get punished by Earthshock. So this works out better. Oh, what, what a draw. <laughs> to answer that immediately. That's pretty much the way you want to do it. Although... Does you want to take the damage on this at all? Yeah, you might want to uh, Earthshock. I wonder. Yeah, if you Earthshock this, then just Fire Elemental will stay at 5 health, and your opponent needs, like, Slam in order to remove it, or Whirlwind with the Death Spite. Whirlwind with a Death Spite. Like, that's a victory. <laughs> I think the Earth Shock, in his opinion, is too valuable for cards that need to draw like acolytes. It's true. It's true. But it would have been it would have been good there to use, knowing the both hands. Speak to me. Yeah, for Let sure. Speak to me. And now this is two draws. That's pretty nuts. And this is the second Fire Elemental. I think Hibbler also has Doctor Boom in his deck. It has to. That's the way if you top yeah, out right. This, yeah, this uh, this deck is pretty standard. Okay, we have a Shredder. I don't know if I like Ragnar's too much, but I guess if it goes face, it, you get another burn, it's pretty easy to win. Oh, look at that Oh! Nice. Eight damage to the face. Was there any surprise? <laughs> Jeez. Um, okay, so you can set up more targets for Ragnar's, but do you want to just set up more targets and then like go aggressive here? What yeah, you think so? I think you just play everything. Actually, no, you, you're dead. You're dead because uh, you Earthshock, Ragnaros, and uh, Lava Burst the Taunt. You can't win. Oh, he doesn't know that. I mean, but I'm, we're talking about Kalento's play here. But he is, right. he is dead. No, but I, I just realized Kibler wins no matter what right now. Unless he draws a second execute. Yeah. Off of the the acolyte of pain, he does have to draw his his last remaining execute here. But but I think I don't really like that play too much. I think his odds yeah. are better, taunting up and charging. All right. Well, there's also the possibility that Kibler doesn't see this lethal. We've seen people miss lethals here and there by not silencing the Ragnaros. Well, he did the head shake, which. Let's me believe he just may wait, not have just seen. Wait it. to make sure. I mean, oh, okay, he knows. he knows. So that's gonna wrap up game number All one right. here. Look at that, Kibler on the board. Yeah, that's with exciting. Shaman. With Shaman. Shaman's Thinking of Grim Patron Warrior from Kalento. Whoa. And let alone that he had the really bad turn two and turn three place because he yeah. didn't have a good curve. Very cool stuff. I don't think anyone would have bet on Kibler in that match to be honest. But um, here yeah. we are. Point on the board for Value Town. Yeah, we're here now. Value Town. People pegged Value Town as probably one of their favorite teams, but not sure how they'd actually do. They, of course, Dog doing really well. And Trump seems to be always in the very big mix of things, going like top four in a lot of events. Yeah. Um, but, the, you know, the, it's a big wild card to see how far they can go, considering that they don't necessarily have the. Uh, the, the general team chemistry here. But I'm not sure either, because Cloud9 is also. Uh, known around the pro scene to be independent really with how they practice you know it's not like Shriver right, and Clanto meet together every week and say like well we're so great at Hearthstone here's a deck he's like well here's a deck and they don't really do that the thing is right now like Trump and Dog are like at the top of their game you know they're doing like excellent in tournaments um, mm -hmm. 
Kibler has has kind of stumbled a bit in Hearthstone tournaments, at least. Um, but I, I feel like he's a little bit of the weak link, and his Shaman was probably the weak link. But he just won with that. So I yeah. feel like that's an enormous thing. I mean, his other deck is Hunter. I'm sure he'll I'm sure he'll pull, pull up a win with that if he has to. Um, you know, yeah, Kibler's sure. Kibler's a fine player. I don't, I'm actually not too sure why his tournament success has been pretty uh, mediocre in the past. But um, yeah, there's there's nothing to really worry about from this point on in the in the Valley Town side of things. Yeah, I mean, people might feel like Cribs firing shots at Kibler, but the truth is, Kibler even self admits this. He says that. His strength is in deck building and drafting and creating cool stuff. And his weak side is his technical execution of plays, which often compromises his own series because he ends up losing games he doesn't feel like he should based off of some of the choices he makes. And he writes them in pretty in-depth on his own website of some of the recaps of his series that he's played so far, whether it's the most recent Challenge Stones or even some of the tournaments that he's competed online. I think I'm pretty sure he's going to write something up for this week on the Archon team. It seems like his right up his alley. The question becomes: Does they send? Do they send Kibler out again, or do they just go ahead and blind pick and roll a die? Yeah, it's now, the blind pick. I actually right. learned about the blind pick from Strife Grow. He's the one who told me. It's like, so what you do in Conquest is you just forget about preparing and you just roll die. <laughs> so there you go. And then um, you know you just win. The best in the game, just leave it up to chance. Well, according to the Conquest format, that's that's what they yeah. want. Because yeah. in the end, um, there's only... There's, a, there's like a couple ways to go about it. Some people might be confused and thinking like, are you just saying it's all RNG? And it's, it's saying that some players feel like it's best to go about Conquest by picking randomly. Because if you pick according to Nash Equilibrium, which is like the best optimal... So, like um, solution every single time you become predictable and then they can pick on you and then all of a sudden you actually get a disadvantage for not being for not picking randomly yeah so that's this is where like there's two trains of thought suppose okay who do you expect might struggle from um from cloud nine's side um i would expect um e oh to <laughs> I think Ecop's playing just solid decks, though. He's got, like, Hunter and Warlock. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty... Like, he's got it. It's fine. So, Dog dog has a dog in his art. These, these have to be, like, some of the worst ones. Strife Crew has a bamboo stick. I feel like I'm looking at, like, a Mr. Pandaria logo right now. <laughs> yeah. Also, I don't know how much that looks like, Dog. Well, there's a dog there, so I mean. Well, I meant the actual character humanization. Like, character they even there. stuck like a like a fat dog whistle in his mouth. <laughs> is the thing is is that like the dog that dog brings with him, or is it like he transforms into that dog? Oh, like beast thing? beast wars type of thing. Yeah, exactly. Whoa, like yeah, that was yeah. beast wars. I was like a total nerd on that shit when I was when I was a kid. It's like transformers who transform into animals. You didn't watch Animorphs either, or read the books? No, I don't know. I don't know what that is. Oh, uh, it's probably in America then. Yeah. Um, I don't. It was, it's basically the same thing. It was like a team of young kids who ended up becoming superheroes by transforming into stuff, like animals primarily and stuff. They had like specialties or whatever. They're, it's equally nerdy to Beast Wars. Don't look down at me, Crip. I see the way you're looking at me right now. Uh, I'm just googling it, and it. it it seems significantly worse than... No, it's just the same. Just like it is playing card games over the internet for $250,000. It's all the same. Don't judge me. God. Some say you shouldn't play mind games. Tell that to the Yerks. <laughs> That's an Animorphs joke. I get it. Um, yeah, I don't <clears throat> get it. Dog is going to be bringing the Mage here and Strifecrow bringing the Paladin. Um, Strifecrow... And Dog are both players who can play anything. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of leaning towards Strifegrow to bring more of the mid-range Paladin. And yeah. I would peg Dog on a Tempo yeah. Mage. That's, that's my guess. I mean, I could... Yeah, I, I, could, I feel like Strifegrow and Dog, again, can both play anything. But I think Strifegrow generally doesn't. Strifegrow generally plays the type of decks that Life Coach likes as well. Like the slowy, controlly ones. Well, he, he'd prefer to. But he also is not opposed to playing aggro. 
I, I also yeah. want to open up that Dog Might Play Freeze Mage too, because I think Freeze Mage is still really good in this type of format too, because it's really strong against a variety of decks, and there's very few super hard counters. Mm -hmm. And right, it turns well, out to be Freeze Mage. There it is. You're right. Freeze First time Mage. for everything, Crip. Is that a Palin? Yeah, that's a Palin. Kind of looked like a Mage for a second. My bad. Uh, golden Mage versus Golden Paladin, of course. Dog versus Strife Crow. Um, oh, if man. Strife Crow is playing like a controlly Paladin, it used to be the counter to Freeze Mage, but I feel these days it's just not happening anymore with Emperor Tharson. I feel like this is just yeah. Freeze Mage, like 100%. Uh, unless it's like Ebola Din, and then he has like some chance. Right. Um, one, one thing to note, too, is that... Uh, the Strife Crow's like Paladin deck. Whenever he plays it on stream, um, he ends up changing it a lot from time to time. So I'm not sure exactly what some of the tech is. Whoa, shielded unless minibots he, everywhere! He has three, <laughs> three shielded minibots. A regular arena Paladin deck, which has like the craziest amount of uh, shielded minibots you'll ever see. Yeah, shielded minibots is, is pretty pretty damn strong card in arena. That's for sure. Yeah. The funny thing is that's where people like um, like first saw that combo with the kings. Uh, like you play a shield mini mouth and you play another one. Yeah. And then it becomes a creature you want to ignore, but in arena you can't because of the threat of kings. And if you do ignore it, you just lose the game. Yeah. So exactly. you, you're like facing two shielded mini bots, and the best play is to suicide your like three two creatures into them. I had feeling. one guy one time play four shielded mini bots against me in uh, the first uh, four turns of the game. Wow. It was That's like pretty amazing. coin mini bot, mini bot into like three drop, and I remember into mini bot, mini bot. Maybe there were three. Look at that. That's two down. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Um, I wasn't really following. Either way, uh, dogs under some light pressure here. It's not super heavy yet, but it's to the point where he has to make sure not to take too much repetitive damage. Yeah. Oh, a block's nice. It's an early enough turn where it's it's forgiving to um, to just develop a secret. <laughs> oh man, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, he'd rather get the scientist. Cause now the scientist. Wow, are dead. that is a pretty crappy hand. Oh uh, well, it's not like the paladin has something to do on turns three here, really, other than big game hunter. Yeah. I mean, you're you're still probably gonna win because Freeze Mage is such a dominant, um, I've got the beast in my dominant face. matchup here. Well, I wouldn't put all the eggs in the Freeze Mage basket just yet. I mean, there is cards like Lay on Hands, and um, that that can help you keep alive if Freeze Mage continues to draw poorly. Uh, it just it just the, yeah, you have to just draw really poorly with Freeze Mage. I mean, we're kind of seeing that already, but we we also see like a lot of card draw, and the card draw kind of changes that around. Like, uh, the mage is not doing well right now, obviously, but yeah. I, I feel like uh, it still doesn't really matter that much. Yeah, it's easy to turn around for them, because they have so much time, generally speaking, unless Paladin can grab really big tempo, but, I mean, they're starting to, he's starting to make some pretty big plays. Defender of Argus is really nice. Yeah. And then Sludge Belcher is pretty cool. My That's not a good card. For Argus. Zombie Chow is very ineffective against Freeze Mage. They not only can stall it out onto the board just, and never deal with you damage, just never but play it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here, um, a Nova stops eight damage, which is pretty good. Yeah, the, I think the Nova is basically comparable to um, to the Ice Barrier. To so I think. But the thing about the Nova, too, is that um, it's really good against Paladin as time goes on, whether to just set up for Doomsayer or even just keep it for late game plays like Antonidas. Mm -hmm. Everything well, is about gaining 8 life that turn. The Owl is really powerful here. It, it just kind of locks out the Doomsayer option. That's really good. I actually feel the mm -hmm. Owl... Strife Crow might win this game. It's not only just a Doomsayer, but to also unlock a Freeze minion if you need to pop for Ice Block. Yeah. 
There was a there was a chance. Okay, if the sludge belcher wasn't in the hand, we almost were about to see the tempo quartermaster with no silver hand recruit synergy. Yeah, probably. I, I've always dreamed about that day whether we'd see it because so pa so many paladins are just willing to hold on to it, but that would have been pretty funny. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, now time to chain freeze. This is way too much damage onto the board. You can use Frost Nova to develop something else, or you can use Blizzard now because it's more expensive. Um, yeah, this is uh, this is actually tougher than it seems. Uh, it might seem like obvious to Blizzard because you're more flexible with cards later, but not quite so. Like you might want to do more things this turn. Huh. Attacking into the Sludge Belcher. So you can set up for Blizzard next turn, or even Flame Strike, or even just communicate ideas to Strife Crow. But why does he think he needs to attack now versus later? True Silver Champion? Yeah, I guess that's an option. Oh, he got a second Quartermaster. <laughs> no, he's not going to do it! Alright, fine. Yes, yeah, sounds the Belcher, doesn't he? Oh no, it's just gonna sell. Yeah, oh, I see. Just deny yeah. the draw. <laughs> just didn't. Well, I didn't give him one card. Give him zero cards. Yeah. Hmm. Well, dog picks a fireball, and normally you want to use fireball to stall for stuff, but there's so many like low health minions that are not above three that fireball feels really inefficient anyway. So that's gonna be sitting on hold. Uh, the annoying thing about Blizzard 2 is you don't even freeze every minion on board. The 1-2 slime that comes out from that Sludge Belcher uh, is going to be alive after this. I think like an Ice Knife turn or a Frost Knife turn is pretty good still, but now that you saw an Owl, you, you really want to combo that with a Doomsayer. Like, even, even Paladins, like sometimes they run double Owl, but I don't think it's that likely. And even if they do, he needs mm -hmm. the other one. It does end up bike firing if you play Frost Nova and your opponent drops the Lothab. And then you can't play Blizzard and, like, you know, you're basically threatened to die. Because uh, it takes your entire turn to Ice Block. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Dude, Quartermaster. Seems like the play. Two arms, men. Still a little susceptible to things like flame strike, but generally speaking, he just puts on as much pressure as he can every turn. That's the the onus of the game here. Mm -hmm. If he pings a three one, there's only going to be eight damage on board, so the yeah. ice barrier cancels out. I think this is an opportunity to develop ice block instead. Yeah, and um, well, Strafford doesn't have very very many good plays either. I think his what? best play is to do it again and quartermaster again. Yeah, quartermaster and make a five five. There you go. It's all right, I suppose. It kind of escapes the flame strike. Dog is gonna probably dig for a doomsayer here, and if he gets it, he uh, should win this game decisively. Um. Yeah. I mean, hypothetically, yes. But at the same time, now he also needs to figure out how to get things like his opponents, like he needs to get Alex Straza or more burn because he still doesn't have a way to necessarily win. He just has cards that help him draw or cards that do a little bit of damage or a second ice block. That's, he needs something decisive, like one of those power what swing cards. Mm -hmm. Does he actually have more secrets in his deck? Because some people who put an anti kill bot actually drop the one ice barrier. It's a good question. We'll find out. Um, Maybe if Dog loses this game, we'd see more of the Freeze Mage. I feel like you have to dig for a Doomsayer, because if you don't get it this turn, you kind of have to Freeze this turn. Oh, man. He yeah, might be you thinking, have... He might be thinking that he can stay alive, so if he can stay alive, it might be better to perhaps dig next turn and just play um, Mad Scientist Acolyte of Pain Ping here. There's no way, though, because... There's 15 damage just on board existing, so there's, it's way too easy for Paladin to... Like, I know people like mock Paladin for not being able to burst, but 2 damage is very easy for them to generate. Yeah. Well, Alright. 
It's just the you burn through three freeze effects. The most you could possibly have is like Kona Cold and another Blizzard. Let me Consecration here. I guess so. I don't know what the benefit too much of Consecration. I guess you use your mana, so you're not uh, floating in. You do damage. And the Mad Scientist can't pick off like an easy trade with Flame Strike, I suppose. Mm hmm. Would you hero power or does it not matter? Like, say if your opponent uh, didn't do anything, you want to keep your board. Like, you keep a spot open by not hero powering here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's one of the worst draws that dog could have gotten. And by the way, he does have that fourth <laughs> secret there. So oh wait, my god. So wait, 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 wait. That was the fourth <laughs> secret? But yeah, the he, acolyte <laughs> triggered first. Yeah. So what happened the, was the damage triggers before the death rattle. Yeah. He drew the ice barrier off of the acolyte of pain, and then the mad scientist died. Died. So he didn't he pull get it. Anything. And then he drew the second mad scientist. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty horrifying. That was that was literally the worst sequence of draws that could have happened in that order. Yeah. Okay, well, not to be too much, uh, you know, a mist here, dog. He's realizing that he doesn't have anything to actually um, stay too much alive here. If he just plays Ice Barrier, that's his best chance. I think Ice Barrier, Loot Hoarder, and Ping something yeah. might be his best chance. Or maybe yeah, even play, play Ice time. Lance because you need it for uh, the burst. Uh, actually, yeah, that's true. Fireball is worth less than Ice Lance because you'll get a refund on your Ice Lance through Antonitis. Mm -hmm. That's true. Oh, Tyrion comes into the hand. That's also a really problematic card, too. He's so big. Well, uh, how much damage is that on board? Um, well, the Ice Barrier is up, I guess, so it doesn't, doesn't make any difference. Yeah, There's two secrets. Your... We can only see one right now. The other one's kind of a bit out of the picture. But yeah, with, with both secrets up, you know what the other one is. You know you're not pushing for uh, a pop here. Yeah, it looks like there's 10 damage. Uh, his opponent will go down to 11. Tyrion's still on the board, though, so even if his opponent cleared it, there's a weapon that comes down the other side. This is looking tough for Dog. He didn't get his wing conditions fast enough. Yeah. Still no Alex Straza. It would have been okay. I think it would have been okay, actually, if he drew Alex Straza maybe this next turn. Or this turn. Because he would have had a chance to, like, play Alex Straza, force the ice block, play second ice block, and tonight it's gather more damage and maybe get double fireball, frostbolt finish, or something mm -hmm. like that. But in this case, it's just... I think you had tonight as an ice lands Tyrion. Yeah. Yeah, force your opponent to choose between either clearing Antonitis or to uh, to pop the ice block. But in this scenario with the true silver champion draw, that should be enough both ways, right? Oh no, he's one no. damage off. Hmm. That's too bad. I wonder. Or is there things that you can do with knife juggler? No. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, he'd be a little bit off. Like he's going for Antonite. Mm -hmm. Put this apple on your head. That belongs. It's more appropriate too, because Antonite is the big threat. It's one of the main win conditions of the mage deck in general. He needs this. Nope, oh, doesn't get it. Yeah, that's not. That's pretty unfortunate. But at least, um, you know, he's he's. Still got a pretty strong board, and it's still resilient to flame strike because of uh, because of Tyrion. Oh man, fireball, fireball, pyroblast! Man, freeze mage losing the paladin. Yeah, it's pretty brutal. It, it's happened sometimes. I've seen freeze mage lose the priest. I've seen freeze mage lose to just ridiculous stuff that's supposed to beat pretty easily. Mm-hmm. I don't Shaman. even know what you can do here. Let's see. You've used 
two fireballs already. So, like, you, you have to think if you can pyroblast and get away with it, with like burning your opponent down. But if you can't get away with Pyroblast, then you have to play things like Loot Hoarder to draw into things that can help you. But you already use both of your Frost Nova, so you can't stall okay. out. Okay, no, you have to Loot Hoarder and double Fireball Face and hope your next two draws are Frost Bolt and Ice Lance. Right? So Fireball, Fireball, 12. Oh, uh, interesting. Okay. Frost Bolt, Ice Lance is going to be 7, Pyroblast. Oh, no, that's one short. Never mind. Nope. I guess that was the better play because my play doesn't lead to a win, it leads to a certain loss. <laughs> Alright, well now he's going to put him down to one and then uh, essentially pass the turn here. Striker's also got a lot of heal, so even his opponent had Alex Straza and managed to squeeze out like a really cheap secret of Ice Block. It doesn't seem possible here. Ice Block allows you to Double fireball, play mad scientist ping. Oh man. Yeah, it's not good enough. I, I really don't foresee a way for dog to get out of this. Um If he kills Tyrion with a fireball, he can stay alive next turn by freezing face and flame strike. Uh, yeah, maybe he can also stay alive if... Nah, there's no, no, the no there's just no freaking way. Heal bot, choose over champion. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to attack first before playing anything because uh, you actually can't use a true silver charge on an ice block or an immune character. Mm -hmm. you can't even, it doesn't let you gain the life. I don't think there's any way to survive anyways, if even if he drew Alex Strauss, he can't heal himself and then really pop it in. That's going to wrap it up. Uh, looks like Dog gave his best effort, but I just don't think it was in the cards at all. Like Because of the way everything drew, he drew his secrets before he drew his Mad Scientist, he drew his burn before his Alex Strauss. Yeah, there, re there really wasn't anything he could do that game. Like, he could have done... You know, the reverse of a few plays. So, you know, he he played like Blizzard instead of uh, Frost Nova. He could have done Frost Nova and then Blizzard or something. But that, that wouldn't have made any difference. He had no outs there. And Strifegrew had uh, at least a, like a 15 to 20 life buffer on top of what he won with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. That was, that was really hard, really hard for the Freeze Mage. Uh, usually not the case. Usually what happens is the, the Paladin... Uh, just gets too slow of a start, and the mage just draws too many cards, gets an Emperor Tharson, and healing doesn't help because you die from 30. So, yeah. yeah, and even if um, you, know, you, you don't die from 30, it's the fact that sometimes you're just too slow. You have like one threat at a time, freeze mage destroys your board. That's, that's another thing to point out too. Dog had a lot of freezes, and he didn't even pick up his Doomsayer. He like, never drew one. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of funny, actually. How does that even happen? Like, how many cards could he have had left? Like six? Uh, it's some. It was definitely like mid single digits. I remember that. Either way, uh, he, he can just look past it and just move on. The paladin deck is out of the way, so the paladin and the shaman, the <laughs> unusual the of the bunch, they're clear. Yep. Yeah. Now I feel All like right. it's a good time if you know that your opponent's bringing Freeze Mage uh, to start. Like the the important thing now is that Freeze Mage didn't get the first win. So now that you know it's Freeze Mage, I think Cloud Nine really should take advantage of that and try to corner it as best as it can with like really good matchups. If it has you know war like Patron Warrior is still pretty strong against. Wait, that. that's and Trump. Is it Trump? Trump's looking good, man. Trump I think that looks been closer to out. you actually. Oh, is it? I think my glasses so. aren't that thin. <laughs> and also, my hair is not that color. Okay. It's not like that. Yeah, you got me. Yeah. So it's not me at all. Okay. All right. Well, Trump versus Kalento. This is uh, going to be an interesting one. Kalento with the Warrior Trump. Um, he's played like all versions of Warlock. I actually don't really know how to pin him on one here. 
Your soul it's definitely be Trump because he does that finger and pointing luck. on his chin a lot. Oh, uh, okay. He does that all the time. Yeah. Yeah, he knows. Uh, we got Handlock coming in here. Um, like you said, it's got the Molten Giants. It's also got Jaraxxus, which is a card that I don't know how often people are putting Jaraxxus in. It feels like it got rotated out just because, again, Jaraxxus is great against the control decks, but if the meta is fast, uh, you don't really benefit off of Jaraxxus because it dies to the burst or it dies to the, you know, the fact that it's too slow. And mm -hmm. also because Patron Wars started getting really popular, so Harrison Jones started appearing everywhere. Not that it matters too much, but it, it's another added, you know, bonus against Draxus. Yeah. All right. Well, Colento um, opened up the uh, the series for his team and failed to get a win against uh, Kibler's Shaman, and uh, he's trying again against Trump's Warlock. Yeah, but this is bad for Colento. Handlock is one of the best matchups against Patron Warrior because you have I think so, really yeah. big minions. They can't get past it. You have a lot of AOEs to clear minions. And, you know, it's just like it feels like a huge eternity to get over those huge walls. Yeah. But that said, Trump's hand's not looking... Okay. It's looking good now. It's looking all right. Before, it, it was looking, you know, a little little weird and awkward. A like all the situational cards, really. Yeah. Okay. Well, I have seen this uh, Grim Patron deck uh, win just about against anything. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever you bring out that charging, like, 20 attack frothing and his other 20 attack frothing friend. Just sends, yeah. just sends like, any deck packing. It's the key to the win this matchup. Grim Patron is relatively ineffective against the, the Handlock um, because... The three health is so accessible to kill. Dark Bomb kills yeah. it single target. Hellfire clears it on the, on the entire board. Uh, you know, Fiery War Axe can kill off anything too. So it's just like, no matter, or sorry, uh, Fiery War Axe is not even that effective because it's only three damage as well. So it's like a bunch of stuff that uh, mm -hmm. doesn't really have high impact here. Blood. And blood. The key to this matchup too is also drawing. And I think one thing to consider outside of, you know, Clento not really using the strike course here for tempo, is um, the fact that he's also not... Like, he also armored up, too, and he hesitated the previous turn because you really need to draw cards against Handlock. It's, like, the key for you to unlock this matchup um, well, more so really than done? any other things because you need to get to those combos pieces. What could he have really done to draw, though? Like, Inner Rage and Battle Rage? No, I mean, like, whether or not he armors up. You just, like, play oh, I see. something and then just, just be able not to take more up. damage? Yeah. Well, I don't think we'll have quite that problem this game. Not like anymore. That eight, <laughs> that eight attack is going is gonna to yeah. hit him right in the face. Also, what's up with these guys not playing any of the new hero skins? I want to see me some Magna, you know? Is it against oh, the yeah. rules? Yeah, that's right. No Magnus? Um, dog, dog was playing... Jaina, right? He didn't bring Medivh out. No. Yeah. What's up with that, man? Scrubbing it up. We need mm -hmm. to see some of those alternate portraits. Yeah, those didn't have much success. I, like, I found out later through Reddit that, like, nobody bought them. I thought they were cool. I thought, oh, I'm like, whatever. There's, there's the no, huge dude. amount of casual people that probably bought it. On, on Reddit, like, 90% of people didn't get it. How many millions of dollars do you think Blizzard made off of those skins? I'm willing to bet that it's at least one. At least one. I think it's maybe one. Maybe. I, um, uh, one million dollars is a lot of money because the last time I checked. Maybe not enough for Blizzard, who knows. Yeah, Either way, I, I agree. I think uh, we definitely need to see some, some hero portraits here. Some yeah. Ones. yeah, we do. Also, I, I love their emotes, man. They're so much more genuine. When Magni apologizes, I believe him. <laughs> Even though it's totally disingenuous. I'm so sorry, friend. <laughs> I'm so sorry, friend. Yep. It's like, whoa. All right. I feel better. I, he does, I think Magna is, is the coolest one by far. Yeah, um, the Hunter, the Lyria or whatever. That sucks. Uh, yeah, it, it wasn't that cool. 
And especially, especially, I get so annoyed when she when the ropes comes up. She's like, "Move now!" I'm like, "Where am I? A Starbucks?" It's like this is so crazy, it's so bad. All right. Um. By the way, there's a game going on. You didn't forget about that. There's a lot of plays here for Trump to build the board, but it just seems like this has been a really one-sided game because Clinton's not been able to draw a lot. Uh, he will be able to now to draw a few cards. I guess you just cash in the loot order first. Yeah, there's. I mean, if you look at the hand, there's really nothing that would affect that play. So mm -hmm. that play is just happening. Let's see if we can get a better option than what we already have. Okay. Nope. Uh, I guess you don't feel too bad necessarily whirlwind um, cycling here just because it does end up paying for itself with an extra card. Yeah. It still doesn't feel great. It's an, it's an enabler for um, execute as well if you pick it up in the next two draws. What if you just do Grim Patron whirlwind whirlwind? Uh, how good is that? I'm not sure. Sounds like material for your next YouTube video. No. <laughs> I'm not so sure either. I'm just, I'm just like looking up the possibilities yeah. here. Yeah. And it's pretty slim. Clunter really needed an execute there. Yeah, I mean, cause now he can't. Oh wow, this is <laughs> this is super anti patron at yeah. this point. This whole like small. taking nine damage a turn strategy is not working out so well for, uh, mm. for Garrosh. Yeah. It seems to be the hard counter. Yeah. I guess you're okay with just playing a second mountain giant here. Thorson's also appropriate because it's a big threat and it reduces the cost, but just set up for lethal, guaranteed. And that should do it. There's really nothing you can do. There's no cards you can additionally draw. Um, Gromash can't even trade for a minion to stay alive on board. Yeah, that's it. No, you're absolutely right. There's nothing there. Kalento's Patron Warrior. And Patron Warrior in general today has been struggling. Really. Yeah, it really has. Um, it kind of tanked it for Archon, in fact. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't the result of uh, of play or anything like that. It just happened to not win against uh, what other people are playing. And I mean, if you like, the Patron Warrior is the the deck that built the, the meta right now. So most of the decks that aren't Patron Warrior are like okay versus it. Yeah. And if okay, no, okay means typically I'll win like half the time or 45% of the time. And, um, well, that's still basically a coin flip, and sometimes you lose a lot of them in a row. Yeah, that's the unfortunate truth here, um, that the patron is not a bad deck at all, even though the win rate's been really low. Life Coach did end up taking the, his win, though, very easily. Yeah. But um, that was one of the scenarios where he was up against a deck that just kind of lined up really well against his. And now we see that Trump got his first win too. So Team Value Town striking game number mm -hmm. three off the books here. And uh, we're going to see if Colenso can grab his first win soon because he's losing those matches. He's losing those Ghost or Gamer Ranking points. He was pretty high up there. doesn't want to drop he? any more. I'm just not yeah. sure how they're going to uh, like coordinate the, these matches just, into the Maybe the one system. games, like 0-1. Yeah... Uh, yeah, it's a tough one. It's tough. Yeah, yeah, probably like that. You're, you're basically playing best of ones, but you over overall score in the best of 11. Meanwhile, Ecop has yet to make his first appearance with Trump making his. Uh, that's officially every member from Value Town. Mm -hmm. So either Ecop is hiding in the shadows, watching intently, or he's late. Oh, I think he's just like the cleanup squad, you know, Kalanto and Strifecore are just going to yeah. blow it, and then Ecop's going to, you know, start the comeback train. Oh, gotcha. So Strifecore and Kalanto puts it for five games uh, for Team Value Town, and then Ecop has to bring it back with Hunter and Warlock. Well, he has to start. Like, mm -hmm. Kalanto and Strifecore still have to win his conquest. The question is, the question I have, Crip, is that mm -hmm. I haven't seen the art yet, but how big will they make Ecop's eyes in the art? For the player intro, because that's kind of what I that's feel true. like you would icon, yeah, make the uh, the icon for him. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. I, I'm I wasn't waking up prepared for this morning to see that. 
All right, well, Colento is trying again. Um, the bench rule will follow if Colento drops this. He will not be able to play in the next match. And that does give uh, the other team some added information. Uh, they might play a deck that's uh, specifically uh, not supposed to do well against Grim Patient Warrior. I don't know what that would be, but I'm sure there's one of them in there. As far as, uh, as, far as the, the match coming up, we have Rogue, which is probably the Oil Rogue, which is probably the exact Oil Rogue that we saw uh, in the other set of games with Archon versus Nihilum, uh, up yeah. against what we know is a Freeze Mage. And uh, I think Freeze Mage is uh, pretty decent in this matchup. I, I, I always think so, and then Rogue sometimes surprises me, especially if you have something that can do a lot of repetitive damage that's really powerful. And I'm not even looking at minions, but I'm looking at cards like Assassin's Blade because you can mm -hmm. only freeze the fa face so many times. And if you tack on a deadly poison, that's 20 damage on a, on a weapon. You know, it's like it's just way too much to, yeah. to try and stop over and over. So the dog has that extra defense. I want to say yes. Mm. He, does, he, he kept the double ice barrier with um, the anti kill bot. I think it actually takes a board to kill that Freeze Mage deck. Did, oh, did the game start for you? A little bit. You Just now. For it. Ah, okay. But we I remember would, from the previous it. game, it was uh, the double barrier and the heal right, bomb. Right, so right. So it's, it's right. more more defenses than normal from the Freeze Mage. Mm-hmm. It is. All right, so looks like we have Kalento vs. Dog coming up here. The Rogue is on the coin, a very nice thing indeed. And Kalento knows that it's Freeze Mage too. I mean, it's it's a little bit easy to extrapolate. I think Freeze Mage would be the most popular type of mage, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. But even so, uh, it's important that you get that information and get it out of the way. Those Vile Teachers are pretty nice, by the way. Mm -hmm. And the Prep. Oh, man. Well, I mean, Prep's great until he picks up a... You know, a spell. He right now he has prep into nothing. Yeah, there's a lot of spells in this deck. <laughs> well, he's got all the minions, practically speaking. There, even the Salsi can be really useful because if your if your board's frozen, it might be important to keep Salsi if you have an oil yeah. and just want to get the burst out there. Let the pain speak to me. Um, okay. Well, he can kill that, but. Oh man, that's really nice. Is it? I think you wanted a cheap spell. Uh, probably, but I think um, what really starts putting a lot of pressure is just like the right options and start curving out. Mm -hmm. So if you just like coin four drop and then go into options. Yeah, it looks like we lost Froden. As far as this turn though, it's a pretty interesting one. Kalento's probably deciding whether he wants to play the uh, the SI or coin out a 4-drop. And if he coins out a 4-drop, I'd be surprised if it's the, the Shredder. Yep, it is a Vile Teacher. Attention, class. With this play, you can prep sprint next turn. I don't know if you'd do that, though. Now with Eviscerate, you can play so many 1-1s. One -ones. I feel like Eviscerate is kind of one of those cards that you uh, you generally want to uh, save for some kind of burst, but you get so much value with two Violet Teachers on board that uh, it, it might just not really matter. And you also, you'd also want to limit the options if if you do end up killing this mad scientist, you probably want to make any face attacks first. So but I, I don't know if you would do that either. I think I'm digging the Eviscerate play. Vile Teacher into Acolyte, play the other Vile Teacher, prep Eviscerate the mad scientist. Okay. This guy's toast. Oh, this is nice. It's the barrier.
Uh, losing the 2 1 charge is a little surprising to me, but I guess with uh, the other Vile Teacher and uh, Prep and all the rest, it's going to be pretty easy to fill the board. So I guess this is the exception to that. I wonder. On Dog's side of the board, what do we have? Can't really kill that Vile Teacher. It's nice to slow the damage. So the ice barrier isn't too bad. But you also kind of want to draw some more cards. You need more than what you have. And with Emperor probably coming down next turn, it might be worth playing. Uh, the Arcane Intellect. The Arcane Intellect Frostbolt seems, seems very strong here. Very nice. Oh. Okay. I'm not sure what that's supposed to threaten, though. Like, turn six to deal four damage on the board. What's that supposed to be? I mean, he has a blizzard, but what does it accomplish? Maybe I'm better to ping the 3 3 and not have to commit to uh, ping the turn after Blizzard. Well, Kalento uh, draws a bunch of cards, which is traditionally the uh, traditionally the play if. Uh, well, if your opponent's signaling that he wants to clear your board, which with that ping he was. Wow. That is a nine card Emperor Tharson. Battle cry for nine mana. In a deck that's really only limited by mana. So that is pretty bad. Well, if you're Kalento here, I think it's time to bring out that uh Viscerite and other Violet Teacher. You'll go to six creatures. I wonder. Which seems fair. You could always Thalnos and uh, Eviscerate. It's a similar situation. Looks like he likes that a little bit better. You do get to weapon up as well. I think the idea behind this play is being able to weapon up uh, lets you push for a lot more damage next turn with the uh, uh, with the deadly poison and the uh, the oil. A bit more flexible in that sense. Kalento kind of forced to uh, play the Blizzard here. Um, it's probably made Blizzard mad sign. Yo, but Crip, can you hear me? Welcome back. I'll show them all. Sorry, didn't mean to leave you out there. Just uh, Wi-Fi ended up dropping there. Anyways, what did I miss? Um. You missed some interesting plays from Kalento, kind of holding back on that second Violet Teacher. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, remember, he started the game with two Violet Teachers. He still hasn't played that second one. In the meantime, he's sprinted. Uh, Dog made some kind of weird oh, ping play, option. trying to signal that he had a Flame Strike, but he was only on five mana, so it was kind of weird. But Kalento still played around a board clear, didn't play the Violet Teacher, uh, played some dinky 1-1s. One gotcha. Yeah. So Sick. Kind of like there. weird back and Thanks. forth play a little bit. Mm -hmm. I am ready to well, um, looks like the Freeze Mage is still in a pretty comfortable health total. Uh, and he does have another Frost Nova, so no matter how bad the board gets, he at least gets one more turn to stall. And it looks like the Emperor Thoris ended up getting off, which means next turn he could drop Antonius and Frost Nova. And yeah, Antonis Frost Nova is definitely really strong, but um, I don't know how, how he sees it. Because it's not really enough to close out the game. Mm. Yeah, there's another priority too to also set up. Mm. Yeah, that's true. 
it's not reliable to, uh, uh, with so many cards in a rogue, to depend on Doomsayer to even activate as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not even like you can set up and try to go for a board clear here. Yeah, but if you do the Antonitis, like... I think I'd be okay with uh, Dooms, uh, with the Antonitis and the Frost Nova here. I think so, too. Just because I don't think the Doomsayer is going to work, like you mentioned. Time runs out on me. Mm -hmm. Both players taking All right, well, looks like he's got to make a decision soon. There's a heal bot and ice barrier, okay. So he wants just a little bit more mana. This play is going to let him uh, Antonidas, Nova, and then Frostbolt, Ice Lance face for three more fireballs. Well, whenever you're seeing a three health creature, your first instinct is to play spell damage and backstab, but what does that really get you? I feel like it doesn't get you enough. So mm. many options. All right, well, the re-weapon indicates that he's going to do a big weapon up turn here. I am ready to meet you soon. I am ready to learn. I am ready to learn. All right, sorry, Crip. I'm, I'm trying my best to hang in there, buddy. That's all right. Um, it looks like oh you made some God. pretty risky plays here. Yeah, I, I, I like, like it though. I, I feel mean, like I'm lagging a little bit too. Mm. Well, I like getting the damage in with the weapon because uh, you can always threaten Blade Flurry to just like whatever he does, Doomsday or Antonitis, and uh, it's also massive damage. Job done. But, right, well, talk about massive damage! Play. You got Antonitis here. That's yeah, crazy. he ended up. He yeah, so many fireballs. Mention how saving it one turn lets him get two extra fireballs, total of three extra. And mm -hmm. uh, it's unlikely that uh, he'll die as you froze the, the rogue and the board. But as it stands, uh, Kalento can deal with Antonius with a sap, but can he win the game? Because um, Dog can just chain ice blocks and fireballs. It seems like Kalento's only chance is really to try to get a Lothab out. So how do you do that? I guess you don't because uh, well, he, if, you, mm. if you Lothab next turn, you still lose. You have to Lothab this turn, right? Yeah, because he would still do the fireball damage, and then he would do yeah. fireball for nine mana. The heal might work. Oh, okay. heal and Lothab! Wow. He actually needed exactly those two cards. <laughs> oh. Oh. Too perfect. Yeah, so the Blade Flurry clears the end tonight. It does eight damage. And, um... Well, hold on. The Fireball... Does it well, matter if he's, like, pinging in between two? No, he's, he's got... He's got the Thanos. Yeah, he's he's still dead, I believe, just because uh, he's got an ice block up, and he's going to be able to uh, to ice block in between these turns. And I that's true. I think that's enough. Yeah. Four health. Um, the key. Yeah, the key is whether or not he could have gotten the Lothab in, and his opponent didn't have the second ice block. But this freeze mage should be able to lock it from here. Oh, actually, no. The funny thing is, you can't play both of them. There's not enough space on the board. Uh, oh, you're right. You have so to kill just off... Dead. Uh, <laughs> that that you violent kill teacher of liability. Why is he just so great except for scenarios just like that, you know? Alright, well, um, I guess this game is going to wrap up. He should have the other fire. <laughs> it wasn't enough. Uh, yeah. It, it was definitely not enough by a pretty big considerable margin. The road just can't heal. Yeah. Nope.
gotta eviscerate his own stuff. There you go. All right, and he's alive for like one turn, but not really because of the discounted Lothed fireball. Six mm -hmm. damage for eight mana to anything you want. Sounds like a shaman card to me. Yeah, it's pretty reasonable, I think. Yeah, it's all right. But uh, for now, it looks like uh, Dog's going to end up getting a very important win here with the Freeze Mage. Because again, the longer this uh, Freeze Mage ends up going, the easier it comes to corner it yep. with really powerful decks and, and good Kalento matchups. And is the so first very player. Is the first player to officially be benched. How about that? Kalento cannot yeah. play in this next match. He's just lost two in a row after losing the opener. Bench Lento. Bench Lento. I don't know. It doesn't really quite roll off the tongue. No. But he's Ukrainian, so it's yeah. fine, right? Yeah. We get, we get like a <laughs> buy on this one. Yeah. Well, uh, that means we are forced to go to Strifeco or Ecop here. And mm -hmm. there's only Warrior, Rogue, and Hunter remaining for Team Value Town. They're in a prominent spot. Uh, being up two games gives them a lot of breathing room if they feel like a deck's a little bit weaker against a certain uh, field of lineups. Mm -hmm. Also, because Colento's benched with two remaining decks, uh, you know you're, you'll be facing Mage, Warlock, or Hunter. Um, does that really give you any advantage, though, to know that information? Mm -hmm. like, what is, I think see. Ecop normally well, plays more aggressive decks in tournaments. Um, he's... He's a good handlock player, absolutely, but I don't know wh whether to put him on handlock or zoo. I'd probably lean more towards zoo or like a demon lock. Yeah. I'd be okay with queuing up Hunter here. If Shrifeco is bringing Freeze Mage himself, then Hunter would actually be a pretty okay pick against everything here. Mm -hmm. if, mm, if it's Tempo Mage... And maybe the rogue's okay to just go go against anything too. Not really sure. I'm not really sure. It's really tough to say because we don't know what the the mage is from Strifeco's end. Yeah. Or the warlock. <laughs> and those are two decks that go like completely polarized. It's true. The warlock could be anything. Well, I think it's time for a dice roll in true conquest fashion. One to three. You think it's going to land on a three? You think it's Kibler time? Perhaps. Uh, maybe. Well, I, I, I hope Dog we again. Come out with the hunter here. Well, Ecop does get the, the uh, big eyes. The he also. Oh! Like, Ecop with the it, googly eyes. It's not, it's not even the googly eyes that get me. It's like. It's like all the weird ones, they have like this weird like half smile. Like what is that? Right. You know? Uh, yeah. I don't know. That's a smirk. Yeah. It's not really a smirk. Definitely uh, called this one from a mile away though. Hmm. Okay. Rogue versus Warlock. Rogue versus Warlock. This is pretty good for Dog either way. I think the Zoo is, doesn't match up exactly the greatest against the Rogue. Uh, a little bit better nowadays because it's really difficult to deal with huge power tempo plays. But um, Handlock, I know a lot of paper players really don't like Handlock versus Rogue, but I f feel like for a Rogue players who are specialized and understand the matchup, it's not as bad as people think it is. Yeah, I think the Warlock's still probably favored if it's this Handlock, though. Okay. Well, this is the opening game yeah, for Ecop. I, I, I definitely would still lean towards that. Whoa! Well, big about the game. Coin. Big game in Rogue, boys. I haven't seen what type of Warlock that was. There was, there was like a glimpse, but I didn't really ah, see. So he's maybe anticipating him. Uh, I can't see either right now. Okay. Oh, it's Zoo. Okay, it doesn't matter. Oh, it's Zoo with Voidcaller. I think this deck uh, is pretty fine against Rogue. It applies the pressure, and a lot of cards make it hard to really clear the board with the Blade Flurry. Why do 
which is why traditionally the the zoo matchup was bad for the warlock player. The knife juggler behind the uh, the void walker is pretty strong. It's kind of hard to get to if there's no uh, backstab. Deadly poison. He does have the blade flurry option, but there's no way he's taking it. Flame Imp. Well, it's a good enough time to uh, get out that uh, Void Caller if you want. You could drop the Egg and the Flame Imp, but how strong would that be? So uh, pretty decent against Blade Flurry. You'd save the coin, you'd have to play out the Flame Imp anyway. Hmm. I think I like the Flame Imp more. The coin flexibility is nice. Alright. I think this works out a little bit better because had he just played the Void Caller, I think he would have just been met with a sap and then uh, a dagger into the juggler. And now, what do you do if you're the rogue? I guess you can sap and blade flurry, which sucks, but. What else can you really do? Options. Yep, that's the play. You always hate to end the turn with uh, no weapon, no board against the zoo player. Not many choices available, so making the best out of a worse situation. Making the best out of a bad situation. At least. Me too, man. I'm trying, I'm trying. Um <clears throat> Alright, sorry about that crib. I'm really trying to figure out some of these internet issues. Um so it looks like uh the the rogue was able to stabilize the board early on with the big blink furry. But um you know, Ecop, yeah. I think, is still benefiting off of this really big tempo off the Void Caller. I don't really consider uh, a Blade Flurry and a Sap like a Stabilize when you end the turn with nothing at all against the Zoo player. Just like set yourself up to lose next turn. I so. Oh man, this can go so badly. Alright, well that's kind of bad. Oh, my, I'm behind, man. It just looks like it pulled the Doom Guard there. Well, that's yeah. annoying. How do you deal with that? Mm. The truth is, they're, they're both even like, horrifying. It? Like, if so the Malganus is a little bit worse, because if it pulled the Malganus, then you would just Doom Guard. <laughs> and it would be a 7-9 a charge for 5 mana. <laughs> which is pretty good value, yeah. by the way. So, it's pretty all, insane for all sure. bad. All bad. Oh my god, on curve Dr. Boom. Alright, well, Dog ends up passing it over. Oh, Dr. Boom off the top, dropping it for yeah. seven mana. Uh, Rogue does have the big game hunter, but still, it's the fact that uh, Zoo's able to really command the board. And now, what? how do you deal with Malganus if you already used your BGH? Wait, actually, if you did get Malganus, he did have the BGH. I missed that. That's so easy. Yeah. That is kind of bad. And now that you have to use BGH on Dr. Boom, Malganus will stick when he eventually hits the board. I wonder. Hmm. 
I think I'm a fan of dropping Dr. Boom and uh, killing off the Healbot. Because the two health Lothab is not worth much. Yeah. I don't know if I like that too much, but alright. Well, here Dog is able to clear both Boombots and BGH. So many Actually leaving him with total board control. For the first time this game. And I think that is the play. Okay, so he wants to do a blade flurry type of play instead. I definitely would not have made this play, but considering Malganis is still in hand on the uh, Ecop side, uh, it does seem to be the winning play. Well, it looks like the stream froze for me. I have no idea what happened. I think he... oh. Rip. I think it was looking like he was doing the uh, original big gameplay that I had expected to see. I'm sorry, not not going over what's going on, guys. I just I just can't see it. Um, but it it did it did seem like uh, he's doing the BGH play and that would leave uh, Ecop with the web spinner, with the Malganus and Owl and Hannah that were both pretty useless. So uh, really up to what he's about to draw. Yeah, guys, give us a second. Um, I just, I can't see what's going on at all. Oh, here we go. Here we go. I see stuff. Wait, what? Hmm. Okay. So it looks like he drew a Void Collar and a Flame Imp from the, uh, from the Life Tap. That would make sense. Seven mana, tap, four, one. Yep. And... How did the BGH die? I'm not sure about that. Maybe it died to a Boombot. Perhaps. Oh yeah, because the backstab is still in hand. Seems like that was the case. Okay, well that puts uh, Ecop in a pretty damn good position. Uh, Dog has some damage cards, but really far from enough. I wonder. As far as plays, uh, E Cop's really just thinking it out because, you know, there's a lot on the line. It's team team tournament. Uh, mm. E Cop. Uh, his recent record has been okay. He's probably looking to impress. You gotta make every play perfect. But uh, really, this this just seems like uh, the Zulok plays out the hand and beats the crap out of the road player. Alright. The rogue got 10 life. The Blade Flurry is pretty real. Uh, he can actually clear Malganus as well with this Blade Flurry, Backstab, and SI7. But he's he's going to trigger the egg. Oh, man. 
It sucks. <laughs> like, you can kind of deal with all of this except Malganus. And here he comes. Oh, devastated. Yeah. So, you lose. Sorry, sorry, sorry. He kept spamming the sorry. Yeah, you really can't do anything here. Um, I think you survive with one HP just because there's only one spider that comes out. You have to backstab first, then blade flurry, then SI. If you blade flurry first, you lose for sure. Right now, he hasn't lost for sure. <laughs> this guy's toast. Oh wow, I guess it didn't work that way. Oh. Okay. Well, now we know. I guess he's dead. Rip dog. All right. Well, Ecop takes another uh, takes his game. Uh, that's that's pretty good. Kind of closes up the series a little bit. Um, it, it's a pretty decisive game, one for Ecop, uh, but uh, also for the team. Um, just because like being down one game is is kind of fine in this uh, pretty crazy best of eleven. But if they were going to be down three, that would have been huge. If if Dog had won that game. Um, it would have been uh, four for uh, for Valley Town and one for Cloud Nine. That's that's almost an impossible situation to come back from. But uh, luckily, here we are. Closed it up, and uh, get to see what comes up next. Right, and we're back. So what do we have? Now Colento can uh, return um, as, uh, as one of the other players has taken a win. He's no longer benched. Uh, the team now has access to twice as many decks, which is a uh, pretty, pretty big deal for them. Um, Value Town's still up a game. Each player one win on the belt and uh, another one to go. Uh, while Kalento remains the only player to have yet won a game. In fact, he is uh, the only player who has lost a game on uh, on Cloud9, but unfortunately for him, he's lost all three. So that, that kind of sucks for him. But this series is still very, very close. Um, quite a few similar classes remain with uh, Hunter, Rogue, and Warrior. Uh, Strife Grows uh, is the extra point that he has to take uh, with, with his unique mage deck that's still left in the, in the match. Uh, have we seen any of these? We've seen, uh, yeah, Kalento's decks. We've seen the, the Patron Warrior, we've seen the Rogue, but we have not seen the, the Mage or the Hunter of uh, Cloud9. All the Rogue decks have been pretty typical. Rogue's been one of those classes that has uh, come up in the ranks uh, quite considerably in the last few weeks on ladder. Uh, people considered Oil Rogue kind of dead with uh, Grim Patron Warrior dominance and all the meta influences that has had. But uh, it's made quite a bit of a comeback and uh, to me it's not much of a surprise that we uh, see that so much of this deck uh, in this tournament already. Hello, Crip. Hello, Maz. How you doing? Oh, I'm going to sub in for Frodan for a bit while he fixes his Wi-Fi. So, All right. Uh, yeah, so you won't be too alone, I guess. <laughs> Been so lonely, man. So lonely. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, chat was like feeling it for you, but uh, looks like it's gonna be Trump's warrior against Ekops Hunter. Yep. Um, Trump's been practicing Patron Warrior a lot, uh, mm -hmm. so I kind of expect him to bring it to tournaments. While Control Warrior really doesn't need any practice, especially if you're a player like Trump because you've played like thousands of games of that. Sure. Um, I mean, it's always been the same, right? Yeah, basically the same. But um, with the recent practice that he's had, I'd imagine um, there's some reason to that. He's probably expecting to play it in upcoming tournaments, maybe like this one. Mm hmm. Okay, well, we'll have to see what type of uh, Hunter Ekop is playing. Looks like it's. Your oh, um, patron boys. Yep. Versus hybrid. So uh, there's, there's a little bit of. Um, 
I guess, disagreement with this matchup. Uh, a lot of players think the Hunter's favored. A lot of players think the Warrior's favored. Uh, I kind of think it's about even. Um, mm-hmm. I think, if anything, the edge goes to the Hunter. Uh, what do you think? I think the edge goes to the opinion. double high main. <laughs> so, like, ex- exactly, you want to start second and you want to coin a high main to high main. Usually, hunt, uh, uh, warriors can't really deal with that, right? But they do mm-hmm. need something early on, like Animal Companion or even the bow to deal with the Acolyte. Yeah, without that early pressure, you're really not doing much. Well, mm-hmm. you wanted to see the high main. It looks like he's keeping one high main for that turn five high main drop, but uh, he's not really digging the double high main as that produces a lot of inconsistency. If, if you play nothing in the early game, the high mains really just catch you up on the board and often don't really mean that much. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, you kind of want more early game stuff anyways and just hope to draw the second high main when you play your first. So yeah. that's fine. What's what's your take on, on the uh, on the images, by the way? Did you did you approve them all? <laughs> yes, I did approve them all. Um, okay. It was like, go wild. Uh, I told my artist to go wild. And here are some you know references or memes that you can use. I sent him a list. And um, that came out. So, which do you like them? Which one's your favorite? Oh no, we're putting you on the spot. What's oh, what's what? what's the best and the worst? Let's hear it. Um, I thought Kaletsu's one was pretty awesome, actually. Okay. Yeah. And right. there's no worst ones, right? Come on. I think Trump's is the worst. It just doesn't really look like Trump. What? Of course it looks like Trump. I wasn't, like, people probably thought I was, like, pulling up a joke or something, but I wasn't. I'm like, whoa, that doesn't whoa, look whoa. like Trump. Well, are you making like a racist joke or something? No, right now? T- totally not. Totally not. That definitely looks like Trump to me. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. okay. <laughs> so um, here, Trump's just gonna um, develop the acolyte, play off the um, play off the mass assets. I'm pretty sure that he's gonna assume that all traps are like freezing traps because of the wolf spinner. Mm-hmm. Is that like yeah. that obvious to make already? Well. Kind of, right? I mean, even hybrid hunters just run freezing trap. They, run, they don't run any other... I guess you can tech in the snake trap, but there's so many patients running around that I don't think snake trap is no. that good an option right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Oh, wow. I'm actually going to draw the extra card as well right away. Oh, man. You think you think these grim patient lessons Trump has had recently have paid off with that play or no? Uh, well, I mean, judging by his hand, I guess he needs more um, stuff to do a turn for. Really trying to look for the... Uh, despite, but I think Trump is better than patient than me. Whoa. I mean, I don't think patient at all. <laughs> oh my That's god! That's a Lord. Okay. Are we ever is... gonna see that in play, though? Um, I don't know. It's hard to deal with. Eh, it's kind it's of a like a high big. main that doesn't have the death rattle, kind of, right? I think the last time this happened to me, I killed it, and the hunter drew it like two immediately. Cons- <laughs> two consec- <laughs> no, two consecutive turns. I killed Whoa. it twice. Oh Jesus, that's not. And good. then I lost to it on the third turn in a row it was played. Oh man, yeah, we might see uh, some interesting stuff there. But hey, uh, Trump with the Inner Rage actually, um, you know, found a Gnomish, so he actually has something to do, which is good. Yeah, I mean, I think the the thought behind this series of plays is that you only have like this much card draw, and you kind of need to extend that to draw into more card draw to continue getting your combo. Because he kind of started with nothing. So, I mean, I think he's been, like, uh, pretty liberal with his inner rage use. But uh, I think it's paid off, and I think that's that's the idea behind it. Yeah, it paid off a little bit. But right now, it's very tricky, right? You have a hunter trap up, and uh, you don't really have a nice clear shredder. It just sticks on the board really, really well. So, um... Yeah, but that trap's going to be a pain in the ass no matter what for this deck. Mm-hmm. So, do you just hope for like a Doomsayer turn or something right now? No, I think you frothing and slam the, the Leoc and then axe the Leoc. Okay. And just or leave you, the Shredder up. I guess you can axe the Shredder and maybe what slam what comes out. That's a bit optimistic though. Okay. So yeah, Trump agrees to your play. Just gonna go ahead and do that. Alright. Speaking of the portraits though, uh, yeah, well, I think Trump's is actually the worst. Um, I don't, I don't think, I don't think Kalento's is is that bad. It's just kind of like weird for me. I'm like, I don't really see Kalento as like the eccentric pirate type. Like oh, the there's a bigger guy, one, right? Yeah, okay, player. okay, but I'm, I guess, I, I guess I'm a little bit distanced from that. I don't really know what that's all about. Uh, Twitch chat knows all about it. I think. Okay, okay. Well, if it works for them, that's that's perfect then. Mm. You know, gets the news. Not bad. And the high main. Well, I guess it's game over then. 
<laughs> right? High main rule? Yeah. Yeah, it's it's the open board high main rule, right? Yep. That's definitely gonna be quite troublesome for Trump. Uh, still no minions. That's not what he wanted to see. He has a few combo pieces though, so I think the Emperor is just fine here. Yeah, it's fine, but I mean, time is sticking away. You're gonna eat 9 damage on the board next turn. Yeah. Maybe he gets a break from this turn? Wow. I don't think so. Like, that hand is, like, vicious right now. Yeah, pretty much. Double 7 drops as well later on. So you just double quick shot this and just, uh, say, develop the Mad Scientist, just go all in. Yeah. Um, well, you can do one quick shot Mad Scientist and get a hero power in. That's true. But how do you like two quick shots in the Hunter deck? Yeah. No, how do you like it? Like, generally, you only see one quick shot, right? You don't want to draw them both together. But then at the same time, nah, that's if fine. In the, it's fine, right? It's, it's kind of like Dark Bomb in a sense. And it's kind of like way better than Dark Bomb. <laughs> oh, yeah, strictly better, right? Sure. Strictly better, yeah. Mm. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just don't really like quick shot as a card. I was hoping that all hunters who played this game would be horribly miserable and lose every single game on ladder. Oh, Unfortunately, wow. that, that didn't really play out. That's quite bitter, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huck Funters, man. Okay, so he is going to, uh... Oh, just do the double push that. Yep. I guess he wants to hear a power value. Oh no, he does the Mad Scientist just right at the end there, past the, the rope timer. Right, just want the minion value more like, I guess. Mm -hmm. Oh, the world is that gonna help? More combo pieces. Well, you can gain a lot of armor and maybe draw quite a few cards here. Right. But uh, at the same time, you're not really dealing with the high main. And that's a big problem right now. Um, yeah, but I think that's like maybe good enough. But, no, you don't. You do deal with high main. It's execute. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If only there was like one more whirlwind effect. That would have been very nice. If only you could get like a zero mana cost uh, Warsong Commander. That would really be the nuts there. Wow. Zero mana cost or so. Jeez. One can hope, right? Oh, yeah. We definitely need to buff this deck. Yeah. Yeah, I think uh, if Trump actually started with like a death spite or something, this game would have been over. So it's all about those key cards, right? Uh, Hunter drawing the Savannah High Main and, you know, Patron Warrior drawing those weapons early on. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so, yeah, Trump is going to decide to do some Whirlwind, get some armor, like you said. And draw some cards. Trying. Maybe he actually top decks a... Does he have time to top deck a whirlwind and play the second one? Oh. Like, what if he draws a whirlwind right now? That would be so gross. I don't know, for me it's frozen. Yeah. Okay, no, he drew an execute. Yeah, so not quite. Not quite. But that's that's still pretty decent. I think if he had time, he may have played that execute on the ooze. Mm-hmm. So he and... nine damage? So I think nine it's one off, seven. right? One off. One damage. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess it's booming time. It's booming time? Are you scared of defrauding at all? Oh, I guess you clear it with the ooze, right? Might as well. Yeah. Yeah, booming time. I guess you could apply the pressure, just like silence the fraud. No, because you don't want to leave the armorsmith either if you do that with, with another creature on the board. You right. can kind of maybe recover. I like the booming time, because... Even if he has like a whirlwind or something, it could just be a complete disaster and like die. Okay. Well, I mean, we've like seen said, that. We've seen that. So it happens. Okay. So Doctor Boom, it is. Doctor Boom is like the, the the best card in the world against this deck because you know you think you're winning as the Grim Patron War. You have lethal, and then you trigger against your first Boom button, and it kills the Warsong Commander, or it kills your Frothing, or it kills your Grim yeah, Patron that yeah. just spawned. But it's such a small chance, right? It, uh, patron, like the Grim Patron combo is actually a counter to um, to Dr. Boom Boom bots, right? Because they double spawn your Grim Patrons. So no. Nah, super it's, unlucky. It's not a counter. I mean, I've seen the YouTube videos. It happens <laughs> every single time. But it's YouTube videos. You know, it's kind of different that way. Oh, man. No, absolutely not. Okay. This so, um, <laughs> so here, I think all your cards cost too much, so, um, I guess you know, just out. Ekkob is going to win two games in a row, and he's actually the first person to get out of the groups. Do we expect this? Oh, really? Like, no, what, what if, what if he got the whirlwind there? That would have been fine. Oh, but he didn't, so, yeah. Yeah, he did. <laughs> yeah. It was actually quite slim, right? I mean, if it, it, it was a whirlwind, 
was like Actually, 70%. if there was, he would have stabilized, right? Yeah. Mm hmm. But not quite. Okay. Well, he's not dead here, I don't think. Uh, well, with the. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I, get, I guess. Oh, the kill command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is kill command enough? I think it is. Six plus seven? Not quite. No, almost, but not quite, uh, yeah. Six plus seven is not fifteen. Um, well, I guess I guess you silence the armor smith and then trade a boombot into it, right? Sure, because patrons have been not running sludge belchers anymore. That's kind of like changed to some more cycle, even unstable ghoul, so for more combo yeah. opportunities. Um, I don't like giving him the one armor when you're trying to push for lethal, though. Yeah, I guess. Well, I was just gonna do that and maybe save the elf or something else. I don't know. I mean, at at this point, you're so ahead. I mean, how close? Like how close are you? You have uh, it's seven plus six, so yeah, it's it's really really close. You just need two damage. Now you need three. Oh, one damage. That's not gonna change anything. Uh, he can still get it if it hits for four, right? Oh, <laughs> you gonna try again? <laughs> just gonna still say boomba like that? Actually, Why not? That be right. Why that not? Be right. One out of eight, you win the game. It seems reasonable to me. Oh, one, oh, one of it. I mean, like, the thing is, like, it's more reasonable to kill your own Boombot, so if um, Trump decides to, like, do the Grim Patron combo against you, then it's actually dead. Mm hmm. Yeah, but no. Just gonna do that. Oh, that Whirlwind means, Boys. That's a bit One late. card late. Yep. Um, he can't stabilize. Because uh, that's probably a freeze trap. If it wasn't, you might be able to. Yeah. What now? So I guess you just play the draw game, hope for the best, and then you'll die. Hope for a Drake Corsair, and that's why I kept the. Uh, kept no, the no. I think if you make this play, you, you play patron. Okay. So. Yeah. Oh. I think. Uh, yeah. See, see. It's, it's Whoa! A it's a counter. <laughs> I believe you. Alright, well, um, greetings, Lord is greetings, gonna take out a traveler. game. Oh, baby. Greetings, and Ekob is having a real fun, of course. Yeah, Ekob 2-0'd. Ekob 2-0'd, man. Yeah, Ekob is, um, showing like he's, um, pretty much... Oh, actually, Ekob is the captain of Cloud9, uh, at least for this tournament, because everybody has to elect the captain, right? Okay. To, like, decide who goes next and stuff like that, and Ekob is pretty happy with that himself. That duck though. face dance, man, look at that. Alright. Oh, all well, right. Ecop uh, getting two points for his team while Kalento dropping the three uh, almost evens out. Yeah. Um, anyways, I'm going to pop off and hopefully Frodan is ready to join you guys again. So um, have fun yeah. casting, guys. All right. Thanks for coming on, Amaz. All right. I'm sorry about that. Chris. Hey, what's up? But it, was, it wasn't it was bad casting with Amaz, right? You had fun. Yeah, I had fun. I had fun you casting anybody, me, just, just not with myself. Like, <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, even, I'm even okay to solo cast, just not when I'm, like, as sleepy as I am right now. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, mm -hmm. so things things are not running, like, very well in my mind right now. Like, it's kind of like gears, you know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when they're, like, really rusty and stuff, they just don't move at all. That's basically what's going on. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh -huh. Tell me But more. also what's going on is, uh, is <laughs> Ecop getting two points. How about that? Two zero. Yeah. Uh, I think he played pretty well. I think people always undervalue Ecop. They look at the rivalry between Trump and Ecop and they think, man, I really want Trump to beat him because Ecop just BMs Trump nonstop. Uh, and they always kind of look at the personality piece of Ecop. He looks at cameras funny. He's, you know, he's kind yeah. of a jerk sometimes. And they forget that they're underneath that. Uh, he's actually a great card game player. Back in WoW TCG, Ecop was like player of the year and in the entire. Uh, professional circuit at one point when he was mm -hmm. playing at his best so this guy is really smart um oftentimes a little bit too smart i think he cites motivation issues because hearthstone comes a little too easy to him compared to some other players who need to grind a lot and sometimes he gets distracted by other blizzard games like here's of the storm but i think ecop uh, when he comes back and he asserts himself he's one of the best players yep yep and uh, another thing we saw is a uh, grim patron where you're getting wrecked again yeah, I also caught the very end of that game too, where it's just like the hunter could do anything he wanted, and uh, Patron was yeah. just gonna die. And I don't understand exactly why. Um, 
it's just I feel like it has to do with a little bit of variance, but Grim Patron has to have something atrocious like a fifteen to twenty percent win rate today so far. I don't think it's that low. I think it's still higher than Ebola Pally played by uh you think so? RDU. Yeah, Ebola like, Pally was twenty twenty five percent, yeah, twenty five percent. Yeah. I think Grim Patron Warrior is above twenty five percent. I think it's like thirty. <clears throat> yeah, marginally better, but still struggling a lot. Um yeah. but you know, now that ECOB's down, it still helps people narrow it down a little bit more. Uh, more importantly, he evened up the series, even though Team Value Town was up 3-1. And we're going to go with a good old Trump versus Kalento, going into yeah. Rogue versus Warrior. These players have faced off against each other many times in the past. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's, it's been a lot of back and forth stuff. They're both uh, extremely, extremely strong players. Yeah, definitely. Now, I, I again really like War- Rogue's chances in this matchup, generally speaking, because of Blade Flurry, but I feel like it's maybe time for this Grim Patron Warrior to show what it's made of. I think it's going to line up some of the, the draws. I think it'll be really nice on curve, and I think it's going to be super powerful. It just feels like time for this Warrior to shine, don't you think? Nope. No, he's on the coin. It's going to get wrecked. Again, no, he's got fiery war. Axe. Warrior. That's great against Rogue and Rogue. Patient Warrior <laughs> gonna get wrecked again. It's All gonna right. be like it's gonna be like a twelve damage blade flurry to kill the board and like one shot the warrior. <laughs> okay, well, I think the Rogue definitely comes in here as generally speaking the the one that gets the nod uh, yeah. in terms of the matchup advantage. But uh, you know, I don't really underestimate too much. All Trump needs is one card crypt. The Death Spite. That card is the Death key spite. to this matchup. Mm-hmm. If you get uh, the Death Spite, you shut down We everything. saw Kalento making like very conservative plays with Violet Teacher against the Freeze Mage, but um, you know that was that was probably just that one matchup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Here, we might see like that thing go wild. Possibly away the Armorsmith. I think it's a really nice move there from Trump. Armorsmith doesn't really generate much value. In fact, it doesn't even trade that well with any minion other than Balanos. It doesn't trade with anything, yeah. Yeah. A double Violet Teacher with a spell heavy hand with prep again. Mm. No coin, mm. though. No coin. Mm. But Oh, I guess he has to deal with his other two mana zero cost spells. So, there it is. But, um, you know, there's still time for the warrior to kind of stack things up here. A lot of times people sometimes even equip this Fire War Axe and get chopping immediately to the face. If you think about it, it is basically Fireball. Sometimes you just spread out that damage over two turns. Yeah. I, I don't usually like that line of play, though. The inner arena expert is cringing when you see the Fire War Axe to the face on turn two. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> It does make sense against some decks. It just doesn't kill anything unless you double tap into something. And yeah, like, no, you're you're right. You're right. Hitting a creature twice with Fire War Axe is generally a disaster. Well, Trump doesn't have much to do here, but he does have some cards that'll allow him to cycle and maybe even uh, enable him to do other cool stuff like slam with the Fire War Axe on a four drop. That'll be good to stall while uh, he pieces together other combo parts. Mm-hmm. Quanto's thinking about the Shredder, uh, which is really interesting. Uh, the Vile Teacher, to me, seems like far the better play, but it is the one that's going to get punished probably less. As the um, We have seen that, that the Grim Patient Warriors are running Double Slam, and with Double Slam and Fiery War Axe, the Vile Teacher is actually more vulnerable. Yeah, because it pieces together really well there. Not to mention that the Pilot Shredder also is a little annoying for the warrior to deal with, just because, sure, you might have the weapon, but can you deal with whatever comes out there? It's not always guaranteed. Yeah. All right. Fair yeah. outcome. Yeah. That's, that's about average. River yeah, I think, that's, I think that's actually exactly average. Yeah, well, I think the I'm average is like 2.3 and like 2.4. Four or something like that. So, yeah, yeah kind of you know, basically the middle of the road there. <clears throat> Slamming to cycle. That's an interesting play. I think Trump really doesn't like his ha- hand that much at all. So, going for that slam is reasonable, although it does limit you in terms of dealing with other cards like Azure Drake. You have to part ways with an inner range. 
Well, I think he's also setting up like uh, a potential whirlwind play. Yep. Yep. That's also a possibility too. It allows him to deal with five health creatures uh, with a whirlwind and uh, an inner range. Mm -hmm. So, Clento picks up the South Sea Deccan. That's not really entirely useful. No, but it's not terrible either. Class. Yeah, I like. I don't. Class. I don't like the deck hand if, if you're gonna play Val Teacher though. Oh yeah, I think you keep that deck hand um, as a combo enabler or a way for you to get the damage in and burst your opponent. I think it's mm -hmm. fun keeping it that way. It's otherwise it's just a two damage charge minion, kind of like a bluegill warrior, the little murloc dude, because they just get swept away by whirlwind so easily. Mm hmm. Speaking of whirlwinds, yeah, we'll probably see Grim Patron inner rage, inner rage whirlwind. Would you inner rage the Violet Teacher just to finish her off at all, or would you just spend both inner rages on the Grim Patron? Uh, yeah, you might want to finish off the Violet Teacher, but you give up two patrons. That kind of sucks. It does feel rather whimsical to try and rely too much on. Um, like, it's just a little too impulsive, I think, to rely too much on the Grim Patrons to carry you if you just go for the ultimate amount of Patrons. Because the Violet Teacher, and if it gets like a Blade Flurry out, then you're just going to be you're just gonna be struggling for a long time. Mm. Well, with this kind of play, it's, uh, that is the safer sort. Yes. Yes. Well, the Rogue needs an answer, and nope, it doesn't have a weapon buff. Doesn't have spell damage. Mm. Okay, so you can take out two of these patrons, three of these patrons, but then you're stuck with a three-three that just kind what of. What about? There. What about mm. deck hand attack the three-two and then vile teacher and weapon into the five-one? Oh, that's actually a great play, I think, relative to his situation. Because um, then the 3-3s three easily get challenged by the 3-5. Okay, so he doesn't trust the Grim Patrons at all. He's going to eviscerate one of them here. Yeah, an even more aggressive play. Okay, so answering uh, you know, the aggressive move from Trump to, with his own aggressive move. Hmm. Yeah, he's really hoping this unstable cool. ghoul gives him some good synergy. But. Well, it is right now. Yeah, it just takes a simple and draw. And it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Wow, you play almost that entire hand. Um. Yeah, actually, I don't see why not. Well, you can. Well, actually, you'd give up all your 1 1s from Violet Teacher. Well, what if you just gave him a card to keep your 1-1s? One Deadly Poison yeah. into the 1-3. Well, this way he doesn't actually take any damage on his Violet Teacher, so it can't get executed, but it is so inefficient based off the way... Well, you don't take damage the other control. way either. Okay, like, so go, ahead, go through your play again. What was your play? You, you weapon up Deadly Poison into the Ghoul. He'll get yeah. an extra card off of that, and then you Violet Teacher prep Blade Flurry, and you get two one ones, and you get to push uh, for more damage. Uh, I'm really scared to give him an extra card as well. Why? You just use Patron and like all the activators. Yeah, but then you help him dig deeper into your deck to answer mm. it, like because now you're still pushing six damage. Okay. I mean, I I understand a lot. It's, it's you're right in the sense that's the highest optimal value play. But um, the one ones, I guess, are, are a pretty big liability in some situations. Yep. Well, in case the second patron in the Warsong Commander, that's definitely not what you want to see. I don't know. Rogue's making the push. But if Trump can survive this push, I mean, there's really nothing else outside of sprint draw that's really going to keep like rebound the Rogue back into this game here. Yeah. Time's running out. Trump, you're scaring me. 
He's gonna armor up past. That's also a legitimate thing too. Okay, armor smith. Mm, like armor smith. Yeah. Just kind of tossed down to the fire. Just get, gain a little bit of life. Do you just go all out, play your entire hand, kill off this armor smith, and just go? It feels like if you wanted to do that, you'd do this last turn. Right, on the one ones. But you don't want to take damage on your violet teacher, so she can't execute it. Or even use Death Spite to get within range here with double the damage. Yeah. Alright, so Kalento is all in. Yeah, and that's Trump. not really gonna work, though. Yeah, because Trump's got the Grim Patron. Patron oh boys, everyone get in here. Yeah, it's really effective. Really, really effective. And Kalento will have to get Blade Flurry, but I mean, ideally, he still gets Sprint. Sprint well, into other can, cards. Kalento can, can stabilize from a, a Grim Patron push because uh, one of the, the last patron dies on the 3 2. And the mm -hmm. other two patrons, one can die to the Vile Teacher, the other to the weapon. That's true, but then the War Song lives. Yeah, I guess you're not really hurts. too. Yeah, I guess you're not too too concerned because this is the second Grand Patron, right? But still, yeah, I think I'd rather kill off the War Song. Frustrating. Why don't you just draw Sprint into Blade Flurry? That would be great. <laughs> I think just Blade Flurry is great. Yeah, but Sprint allows you to utilize the seven other mana. Show that Farseer who's boss. Oh, he goes face. Yep. That is man mode. Start stacking up that damage. Boy, that card mm -hmm. sucks. Yeah, SI7 agent by itself turns out it's just kind of average. But I still think you play it, right? Just for board presence. You don't have to. You can leave a Grim Patron on the board at 2 health. Well, I mean, either way, you're leaving a Grim Patron on the board. No. Next turn, right? Or you're going to kill off, you're going to leave the Warsong Commander and you kill off the Grim Patrons? Well, I think killing the Warsong Commander is probably a bit better, but if you wanted to get all the Grim Patrons off, you could. That's true. But I, I feel like the Warsong is ultimately the bigger threat, the biggest threat. Mm -hmm. Although yeah, I guess I, you do. Mm. I think if you do leave a three-two Grim Patron, then you actually do save the um, the SI seven because Trump is playing pretty aggressively. You might go face the Grim Patron. You might get a freebie. Okay, Bot Teacher is also a high priority target there, so you know that the Grim Patron will want to trade into it, assuming you can't kill him. Now the bad news, the bad news for wow. Colento is that there is that a is whirlwind. really oh. bad news. <laughs> Wait, is this, this isn't lethal by any chance? Is it? Um, uh, two five plus three, a whirlwind. Three, three plus six. Three three plus six. So no. Yeah. It's pretty good though, still, because now you get to kill the bio teacher and you put out a lot of damage. And Kalento also used his deadly poison. So this has to be like a series of amazing draws here for Kalento in order to survive yeah, and really not does. go zero three. Oh, uh, swing and a miss. I don't believe it's zero three. I think he's zero four. Zero four. Yes, that is zero four. Oh, Trump's done for the day. Pack it up, boys. The mayor Pack is going home. <laughs> oh man, Clinton's having like a yeah. really, really unfortunate run here. It seems um, like always one player is uh, getting trapped here and cornered for at least one of the teams. Mm -hmm. Oh, actually, no, no, never mind. Dog end up winning his game, right, with Freeze Mage. Okay. Have we even seen Kibler since the first game? By the way. Nope. Kibler has to win one of the Hunter. Dog has to win one of the Rogue. Uh, as these decks start being eliminated, you have like slightly better and slightly more predictable matchups usually. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but still being behind games and I mean, I don't know, man. I feel like both Rogue and Grim Patron Warrior have been really inconsistent today, and those are both a Kalento's decks. 
Yeah, that would make sense too. If Clento loses again, if they, say they throw Clento out, he's going to get benched twice in the same series, Crip. And that might be a record not broken for a while. <laughs> you, only can, you only can get benched yeah, twice. Yeah, you can't get benched series. three times. I was thinking about <laughs> it. Yeah, you cannot well, get benched three times yeah. in the same set. All right. Well, no one could break his record. They can only <laughs> they can right. only accomplish it. Yeah. It might be named after him, actually, if it happens again. Oh man! Like that's the ultimate humiliation when a when a bad achievement ends up getting named after yourself. Yeah, but again, it's not really his fault. Like everyone's everyone's played great today, right? I, and again, I feel like it, his patron warrior specifically has also been struggling with some of the draws too. Although you could argue that it could be the tech that they include. Some players are mixing it up a lot. That's why guys like Tiddler Celestial, for example, he was bringing one armor smith and one shield block, so that way he could address the meta a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was doing a little bit of weird stuff throughout his entire patron deck. So maybe, maybe just the deck preparations overall and some of the small card choices ends up influencing it. But overall, I agree. I think the, the play has been pretty solid from both ends so far. Yeah, I feel like the tech decisions and all that kind of stuff is still pretty marginal because in the end you're playing a combo deck. <laughs> it's like whatever. I mean, it, it, the tech choices usually have a lot more weight in, like, mid rangey decks. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think so. It is kind of a mid range deck, but it's not really how you win. It's a different play style. Yeah, certainly. The combo uh, is very effective there. Now, we still haven't seen Strife Crow play his mage, right? No, we've not seen the mage. We've not seen the Hunter of Kibler. I'm I'm sensing it's and time there we to go. see it. Time to see both. Ooh, yeah. A little east meets west here. We um, got Kibler versus Strife Crow. Is it east meets west? Yeah, it's like the east bamboo, like Asian influence versus like the. I guess dragons are a very eastern thing too. Never mind. I guess the origins. Okay. Of, I'm not talking about for their origins. I mean, this is all. This is pretty much an all Western tournament outside of Team Celestial, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess. Well, unless you count Amaz. Well, Amaz's not playing. Never mind. Amaz is also technically from the Asia region. Technically. A lot of technicalities. A lot, a lot of these pro players are from a lot of places, basically. True. True that. Like, these, these are Americans. Two Americans. Mm-hmm. That's right. Americans. Uh, Strife Grove comes from the great Texas state. One of the... The biggest countries in the world, essentially. Like, Texas is kind of like its own country, effectively. Yeah. Kibler's also from uh, Los Angeles, so... Mm-hmm. He's actually not too far from Strife Crow. Both of them Whoa. live about an hour apart. Look at that. <clears throat> Acolyte of Secrets. Acolyte of Mystery. Whoa. <laughs> Wasn't there a Whoa. villain in uh, it's, a it's cartoon? It's Medivh versus Alira. Oh. Hello. How about that? Hello, Wanderer. Kibler looks bored. Look at Hunter. Okay. That's nice. <clears throat> I think he looks a little nervous because uh, the great Shiro is looking over him. Mm. Also, He's I pulling think, out the dog supporters. I think there's some like bug or something. You see like the secret there. There's there's no way there's a secret up right now. No, not unless this is a heroic adventure of some sort where your opponent starts with. Oh, it's gone. What sorcery is this? All right. Really like the freeze trap. It's really never gonna hit on anything, so it's good on that one. Yeah, the I mean the mad scientist you just don't want it to pop back, but uh it does. It's okay though. Ultimately you just need need to draw cards and mad scientist gives you something to play on curve for turn four. Unless you want to ping the the knife juggler. Uh whoa. Whoa, reckless. Okay. Wow. Woo! Hello. Tougher. Yeah, okay, he's just going phase. That was an extremely aggressive play. Because if that juggle hit uh, the acolyte, it would sucked. I mean, he's got IMB Gowl and he's got Lotheb. Like, these are two shutdown cards against Mage, not to mention the hero power. So I can understand Kibler's rationale of, like, I'm not going to take this slow. You know, I, I like to move fast. I'm just going to go ahead and attack the phase as much as I can. But. Like you said, you don't want to give Mark? cards to Freeze Mage. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, when there's nothing on the board, just go ahead, charge. Just it up. 
Hero power. Double L. <laughs> okay. Different hero, same face. Yeah. Just keep hitting it. <sighs> Do you like the I animation am. of this one, by the way? I think it's pretty cool. The steady shot? Yeah. It's it got like, like some purple leaves. and green effect and stuff. Like a poison Yeah. Shot. Yeah, that's all right. Wow, you are hard to please. No, I, I don't like the hunter overall. I think Medivh is, is like standard. I think Medivh is like par. This is like what we can expect from like golden heroes. And then the leader is like garbage, and then uh, Magni is like way exceptional. Because the the hammer coming down. The hammer, the voice acting. He just looks cool. I don't know. It's like it's like really well themed. I think. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, Medivh is pretty cool too. I just wish the fireball was yeah, maybe right. at least a little purple. Like if you hovered over it, converted purple or something like that. Yeah. Uh, this play to draw cards feels really hard to like. It doesn't feel like it's just guaranteed you to get much. If you play Mad Scientist, at least maybe you can try wish uh, weed out some of the the life mm -hmm. gain or maybe even the ice block. I'm kind of like looking at this game and seeing how. Strife Grove basically has almost no chance. Oh, there's certainly a chance. I mean, the draws yeah, might, might give him, like, he might get Ice Barrier into Ice Barrier type of thing and then just gain so much life. You think it's double owl time? Uh, well, I mean, the thing about the Iron Beak Owl is I want to save one for the high main for the inevitable freeze. Who Don't you think? Because... Eventually. Yeah, you should probably save one at least for Doomsayer. Yeah, or Doomsayer, you're right. But like, either, if either save one so that way you can silence your minion so you can press for an ice block pop or lethal, or um, or you save it for Doomsayer, like you said. Pretty sure you're hero powering, but I'm not sure about whether or not you worry about this Thalnos trading well. You don't, um, now. actually, yeah, you, you do want to put your opponent on even health. Yep. Because um, it's not for killing him, it's because Quickshot puts him on odd health and you could, uh, you can proc him at one rather than two. Does one versus two really truly matter versus Hunter? I if, guess uh, not. In terms of the ice block? Yeah, I guess not. I guess you just stay at even. But generally speaking, you're absolutely correct. And look at that, Ice Barrier was drawn. That's pretty big. Um, because now it gives Strifeco an opportunity to uh, be able to get a lot of life gain and maybe stabilize enough. He's still going to camp on this a little bit. He knows that this uh, is a little bit slower, Hunter, still. Ho oh, ho! Yikes, kill command. I think we're just uh, more smork. Well, s the smork play would be to just like use your burn to the face here, but um, I, th I mean, oh, oh, you mean what developing? You, you mean you, the the minions hitting? Yeah, the one the ones. Face. Okay, okay. Um, I still think the high main might be the best play here, just because of how much pressure. Uh, oh, absolutely. I yeah. think that goes without saying. I think it's just if you want to clear up some of that board, but I don't think it's worth it at all. Yeah. What I like about also the high main too is that even if it dies for some mythical magical reason, a high main can die like flame strike. Uh, you still have a minion that might activate the kill command because of the death battles. And you always have the owl as well. True that. True that. The owl can unfreeze the high main for six damage. In fact, that would be lethal if his opponent just like frost Nova and assumed that he was okay. Interesting. You think if he draws Frost Nova, that might actually happen? Realistically, He's out already. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Team Value Town would go up five three. More importantly, Kibler would be undefeated whenever he has a dog face behind him. <laughs> That's a pretty freaky dog face. His own dog. That's oh, his dog. Don't he impaled his dog's face. head on on a stick. Ha! Yeah, and he blew it up twice the size. Because his dog's not that huge. Oh, okay. Oh, he drew Fast Nova! Oh, man. Uh oh. The temptation is so real right now. Okay. 
Uh, oh, he's gonna do it. Oh, yeah, he did. Okay, good. Almost a disaster. How much damage does he have at the moment? He's got 6, 11, 14. Actually, is he being good to attack here? Um, that's a legitimate concern, considering that you might be able to burn him down, but I think it's fine, because either way, you're removing all the armor this turn, or you're just keeping it on it, and you're floating around the same exact health anyways. Mm -hmm. Lothep seems okay, but he's still going to get a secret, so... Mm. Ooh, Silence and Lothep. Okay. That does make Frost Nova very attractive. Yeah. Now Frost Nova's... Probably the be only play here. <laughs> That's like the fastest card I've seen Stripe Crow pick up ever. Well, it's normally like his like turn the started and then Frost Nova happened. Yeah. There you go. And if he can develop Ice Block I th next turn, which he should be able to, Stripe Crow basically has this game in the bag. Unless his opponent draws the second kill command. That's the only way. Second kill command is lethal. Hmm. But like he can't. He can't Alastraza. So. Oh. Oh wait. He doesn't have enough mana to do that. No. Yeah. Strefko wins no matter what. I think. Right. Why? That's interesting. He has to. He has to he can, block and not get procked, but he will get procked. But he has Blizzard and uh, Ice Block next turn. Oh, I see. And then he yeah, develops yeah, yeah, yeah. Ice Block, and then he just outstrazes, and then he has, uh... Well, actually, no, 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 he doesn't have damage to kill in one turn. Like, I assumed that he had damage because of the Pyroblast and Fireball combined for 16, but he can't play both of those. But what about uh, Wolf Rider and Kill Command here? That's pretty strong, that's 10, and you can proc next turn with Quick Shot and Hero Power. Yes, that is excellent. In fact, uh, I think that is the play. Well, it's certainly not another high main. <laughs> not unless you're feeling generous. Yeah, I mean, the reason to, to those watching, the reason you don't play high main here is because if he can't handle your existing high main, you're going to win anyway. Mm -hmm. But if he can handle that, it'll trigger on both high mains, which means that you'll lose. <laughs> yeah, more importantly is that you're now threatening to, to actually kill because the high main, the purpose of the high main here is so that way you can set up, that way you're always threatening to kill the mage, even though it's just trying to stay alive. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so Kibler will set up this ice block, and I, um... Hmm. Oh, man. Now he just needs one more fireball. I think he needs a little more than that. Well, if he gets the second fireball, then he has Alex Straza into 15 damage. Hmm. Oh, with the Frostbolt. Oh, you're right. Yes. You're right. However, wait, one thing to also consider is maybe how much damage he can do. Maybe he can Alex Straza himself, mm -hmm. perhaps. He will have to. And then it'll be Alex Straza plus the three from this turn, plus... Actually, that's true. If he Alistrazes himself and then top decks a fireball in the next two turns, then he'll win. I think that is the win condition. Yeah, or he can... Actually, he has a second He has a second blizzard, too, so he might be able to get mileage off of that Alistraza. It depends, though, because there's still a lot of damage coming the other way with this Shredder. Because yeah. you Alex tries yourself, you all, you have to kill the Lothan. Or do you? Hmm. I mean, now you can Alex draws wait, can you do that? Can you get away with it? I, oh, I think you still have to. I think maybe you Alex draws yourself, trade into Lothab and freeze the high man. Yeah. Yeah. This is uh, maybe okay though. He's oh. going to be one damage off lethal um, if he draws fireball. So he needs a second ice block right now. Hmm. I think kill command is fine next turn, actually. Right. I think you just want to develop high main. Unless yeah. you want to kill Alastraza. 
That's reasonable. Like how? That's oh no, that's actually the play. I think you kill Alistraza and drop the high main. Because with Alistraza and you're at 24, what do you what do you die to? Who to shoot? Um, well, the same question exists as well. Like, I, I don't disagree. I think killing Alex Draws is the really safe and guaranteed play. But you don't actually die to any combination of cards now that you saw an Ice Lance. Now. Yeah. Just no Doomsayer. Okay, perfect. Man, Killer sees it. This is hard to see. I feel so, at least. Yeah, it's, it's hard to resist, right, when you're, like, trying to press, yeah. pressure this much. That is that is perfect. That is the absolute. You also best think play. I want to hero power as much as I can, right? To get involved. oh my god. Uh, let's see. No, not quite. Not quite. So he can Thor's in and freeze the high main, and then. <sighs> mm, so you want to frost bolt the three two? Sorry, I'm 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 as if as if I'm playing too. Feel frustrated on behalf of this because I've been in this scenario so many times. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think you have to frostbolt and ice lance. Yeah, you can't take this much damage. Okay, still doable, but it's very difficult. Oh that wow, help. that does help because the five damage is what Strife Crow needed. Well, without, I mean, I without think the five damage, Strife Crow can't really do anything. Mm, okay, yeah, fair enough. But the fact is, Thorazin can just sit here. Wow, Ice Barrier. Are you kidding me? If he blizzards, how much damage exists on the board? Four? Blizzard Ice Barrier? And then you just let Thorazin just sit there making things cheaper? Yeah, you'd have to leave Forsen on the board. Getting him frozen is a colossal mistake. Hmm. Yeah, okay. That that's definitely not the case because next turn you'll have Pyroblast and Fireball for uh for ten mana, right? Mm -hmm. That gives you a lot of options, um, because Pyroblast finally gets unnerved. Wait, is he attacking in? Oh, okay. So he's gonna replay Thorson? No, it's too expensive, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I think he was anticipating maybe a freeze um an explosive trap. That has to be the only way. Mm-hmm. Okay, Shredder ends up uh, coming here, which is good because it's resilient. <clears throat> Job's done. Did that yeah. attack cost Strife Crow any chance of comeback? Because it's still really difficult, even if. Uh, yeah. Even if it did. I'm not sure. It doesn't seem too great, though. Oh my god. <laughs> Strife Crow will not die. He refuses to die. Actually, well, if... I mean, if he really, if he really wants to test Hold the on. waters here. If he fireballs a Shredder gets a Doomsayer, he'll win this game for sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you want to just go out, go out okay. with a bang, is just it, go ahead is it and, going out? and mess with him. I think that's the only way to win. Um, Because you have... How much damage do you have? You have 16 damage, 19? Yeah, it's not enough, really. But you still can just ping and then... And then what, though? There's really nothing at all to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's actually a really good point. He might have to hope for Doomsayer. And if it's Doomsayer, he could ping the high main and make it 2-2. That would yeah, be absolutely insane. Yeah, I should have just done insane. this first. Oh, Peggy. Alright. Okay, Kibler are going to press in for 10 damage here. He's, you know what, also that egg is really annoying because if he picks up Flame Strike, which would have been a board clear normally, it's now not. No, it still is. You just attack the egg with 0-2. Or with your 3-3. Oh, you're right, you're right. You can attack the 0-2.
Well, you survive if you play the Emperor Tharson, and next turn you can Pyroblast and Ice Block. I think that's the play. I think it's ping the high main, kill off a 2-2 with the heal bot. Actually, I'd kill off the scientist, because that might bounce your heal bot the next turn. Yeah, that's a good point. Maybe you oh, can get no. the second free team trap. No, it's, it's not. It's This play is better because... Uh, oh, that's lethal. There we go. Kibler takes it, boys. No, because he needed the 5 damage to win. He needed to Ice Block, Pyroblast, attack face with the uh, Emperor Tharson, and draw like another Pyroblast or something. Like that was his Draw way. a second Pyroblast? Oh, yeah. Geez. How else was it going to happen? I don't know. Maybe Antonidas. That would have been the yeah. way to, to be able to net the win. Well, either way, that ended up uh, going into Kibler's favor, and he goes 2-0 for the day. So just that means... Cop. Value Town is on match point here, and Dog has to yeah. win it with Rogue up against Freeze Mage, Patron Warrior, and the other Oil Rogue from Kalento. Yeah, and uh, I think Dog is is a Rogue player. I think his favorite deck, isn't it? Yeah, I want to say so. I think that and Druid are like the two classes iconic to Dog. He's also tried to make Warlock like something that he really loves doing too. He specialized in a lot of weird stuff. I remember he tried making this Hobgoblin Warlock deck and mm -hmm. it ended up winning a, a game, I think, in a tournament, but it ended up losing like two other tournaments that he was trying to play in just for mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. I think it was like Kingwin type stuff. So It's hard to make, um, uh, hard to make uh, new unique decks these days, but uh, it's good to see someone try at least. Right, right. Now, this Rogue deck... I'm thinking um, you can just send Strife Crow out there, so that way you can let Clenta do his thing. Otherwise, uh, you risk going ahead and letting the Rogue match up against the Patron Warrior. But you can pretty much do whatever you want, right? Just do whatever you really want. Matter. Doesn't matter. Maybe so if uh, Strife Crow doesn't want to wait nah, around. You can just go. Ahead and I know. I, I know these guys. These guys are going to be time efficient. They're going to send the worst matchup first. So what's the worst matchup? Oh, you think Probably, so? Yeah. Yeah, Clenta's because you have to. You have to win with all three. Clenta's like, man. I could just gain an hour here. So let's send the yeah. warrior in or something. Well, that, that's assuming that you don't want to play the odds and percentages to maximize. But um, you're absolutely right in terms of the big picture. Well, if you go, if you get wrecked like six and three or you go six and five, it's the same, isn't it? That's true. But you also get some wins on the board for your own rankings and whatnot. Does Kalento want mm. to. Like, the Strife Co. want to wait around as well. Like, if, say, if Kalento has the weakest class matchup, and you're talking about time efficiency, Strife Co. has to sit there and wait for Kalento, right? To finish his games. Because uh, if Strife Co. wins or loses here, like, if he wins, he's done and he doesn't have to do anything else. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I guess that that's the, the idea. Sense. Fine. We'll give it to you. I mean, maybe maybe we're completely overthinking it, but that's <laughs> my was, theory. Maybe it was the dice roll. Just rolled one this time. <laughs> All right. Well, Dog needs to win this one here. He's the last remaining member from Valley Town that hasn't gotten two wins today. They're up mm -hmm. five to three. Yep, and they've been in this uh, up two games position once already, and uh, the gap was closed immediately by Ecop sealing two games uh in fairly dominant uh, fashion. All right. Let's get to it. Rogue versus a mage. We've seen this before. Where I think last time we saw it, I disconnected. I didn't get to see exactly how it happened. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't think the rogue won. No. The rogue, the rogue was Kalenta. And Kalenta hasn't won. So, no. Kalenta oh. did not win that match. Yeah, he, it, it was a case where uh, he had to like sprint into Farseer and Lotha, but he didn't have space on the board, and it didn't oh, matter right. anyway because he that. had uh, an Emperor Tharson fireball, so he could fireball and ping for exactly lethal on seven. Mm -hmm. Pretty pretty funny game actually. Yeah, it was like, well, you got the right cards, but it didn't matter anyways. Mm -hmm. Well, that's well, not exactly the appealing opening hand for. For no, Strife that's terrible. Uh, it seems like Strife Pro is playing the same type of Freeze Mage deck. A lot of these players are playing exactly the same decks. Um, it's, uh, you know, 
the really defensive one with the bonus heal bot in there. One heal I bot, like the bonus barrier. heal bot. I yeah, like the I bonus it's... heal bot, but at the same time, it's like a lot of defensive stuff. So sometimes if you, like it makes you even more vulnerable to just having bad hands. Yeah, I guess so, because normally you'd like, I mean, I don't know if, they, if they're cutting like the second loot hoarder or if they're cutting something altogether that's really offensive, like Pyroblast, but I think we've even seen the Pyroblast. But I, I generally agree with you. I think uh, I really like the draws, because the consistency of Freeze Mage is heavily dependent upon its early game draw yeah. all mechanics. Okay. Alright, Rogue's on the coin. It's got Violet Teacher. Good stuff. I think if we see the um, the Acolyte... Oh, no, no. Okay. I was just imagining it, like, if we uh, if we get a prep from uh, from Dog, I think he'd, like, consider prep sapping after Violet Teacher. Yeah, sap is also good against Doomsayer. It's one of those things where if they mm -hmm. Frost Nova Doomsayer, you can deal with the Doomsayer efficiently and even build your board. But um, you want you definitely want to deny the draws. This is a very good hand for Strife Code too, generally speaking. He's got early game plays, draws. Doesn't have the Mad Scientist, but still at least Ice Barrier is very effective because Rogue cannot kill you just through burn alone. Mm -hmm. Has to hit you in the face. All right, coin teacher. teacher. Standard. We'll see if it comes to the point where Kalento was at, where his whole board was one ones that were useless and he couldn't play anything. What do you think of just the YOLO Doomsayer here? Uh, I, I don't mind that. I also don't mind just fireballing the Violet Teacher. I know it might be like, well, I don't really want to yeah. waste fireballs, but you have Antonius in the hand, and he's the king of fireballs. He majored in fireballs and got his PhD yeah. shortly thereafter. You're yep. set. He's also dead in the Warcraft lore. Spoiler alert. What? I thought the statue was just in memory of a living internet. <laughs> I don't know. I just remember reading uh, that everyone died. Basically, Warcraft was Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones. Oh, I don't know. I never read the lore. All I know is there's a statue of a lot of people like everywhere. So that's probably true. Oh. Like, you know, in Warcraft, uh, World of Warcraft, there's also like... Oh, you definitely know. There's things like honor people like Wreckful and Trump are in WoW somehow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And there's also Ben Brode in WoW too, which is pretty Oh, Blizzard's gone. Yeah, they, yeah. They, made, they made some mechanic, uh, like something with Wreckful or something, Wreckful's item, and then like two months mm -hmm. later, they, they banned him. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just Blizzard things. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't think losing the Blizzard's that impactful. I think, if, in a, if anything, Dogs or Strife Coach just relieved that it's not like Alex Straza. Uh, the deeper yeah. you get into the deck and closer to your win conditions is the priority. Here. He's got two freezes on the board anyways uh, with Frost Novas. Um, mm -hmm. So I think he's he's more than okay with parting ways with Blizzard if it means getting that much closer to Alex Straza. No guarantees, but we'll see how things pan out. What do you think you're thinking about here? Doomsayer combo, maybe? Yeah, I mean, six man is a little awkward. You can develop Ice Barrier and... and something else, but I think the Doomsayer combo is the best, considering that your hand's too full. <laughs> Way too full. You're not really expecting this Doomsayer to do much. To, you, you, there's so many ways for a Rogue to kill it, especially with uh, spell power on the field. Yeah, well, he can kill it with um, the backstab oil play, but I have to say, I kind of like the sap. Yeah, sap and... Maybe you can Phantom Knives first if you just feel like it's No, I think drawn. you want to develop a weapon with the oil drop. Okay. Also reasonable. Yeah, I like that a lot. Mm. Yeah, Blade Flurry 2. There's no reason to attack here. Alright, well, if you're Strife Grade, you're just going to try that again. Yeah, I would assume so. And I think you can usually develop this loot hoarder with it. 
Um, looking for an alternative play as well, considering that his opponent just equipped a, a deadly poison, so he might be going for some damages. Ice Barrier is reasonable, but you're asking to get punished pretty hard by some big damage. Mm -hmm. 7 plus the 6 damage weapon plus the 3, so that's 16 damage coming this way at least next turn. Yep. Well, that, that's at most. I don't think anything else can possibly be played here. Oh well, yeah, based off this, you know, it was before uh, we figured out what would be drawn. And it lands on the higher health minion. That's annoying too. Yeah, it is. And uh, again, Strife Crew doesn't have any uh, immediate removal for it that I can see. Actually, it's, it's Frost Nova Ice Lance that has to be used to remove it directly. That sucks. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this is really awkward. I think, because the thing is, now that there's a six damage weapon, it's like there's obvious ways that your opponent can deal with Doomsayer and not have to worry about it. Uh, hmm, okay. You also have to figure out a time to draw cards. Like, Arcane Intellect's just floundering in your hand here and mm. Acolytes. Because your hand's too full, but you need things to like play secrets, so that way you just get the value off of them, and you can set it for Alex Straza. Yeah, the secrets need to come out here. You might be able to play the the. It's both secrets, that's right. I was thinking also maybe the possibility of playing Acolyte, but I think that's. A little bit too greedy. I don't know about Doomsayer either. That doesn't really do much. Yeah, Unless you're trying to just gain 7 health. Yeah, that's basically what it is. I don't think it's that bad. Oh, wow. That is some damage, boys. Okay. 7, 10, um, 22, 23 from the spell power, plus 5. That's 28. Okay. Yeah. So many. Dog's got 28 damage this turn. Well, there's a secret up, so do you really want to do all of that? I don't think so. I think you just want to sprint. Sprint to more options. The thing is, I think you mill yourself if you don't get a prep. And you didn't get a prep. So that's that's a little bit of a downer. Um, You really can't use the backstab at all. No, I guess you just mill yourself one card. Not the biggest of deals. Also, because you didn't get any um, mm -hmm. any more weapon buffs, I think it's fair to just attack with a weapon this turn. Yep. That's cool. You already have a lot of damage anyways. The fact that you were able to get the two attacks in the Zashu Drake with buff uh, attacking the oil is so huge. Wow, no, man. Stab it. That is man mode. He doesn't want to lose another chance for an oil or something. Oh, well, Emperor Thorson and uh, Frost Nova allows him to make a lot of this hand cheaper. Oh, there's and no more way you Frost Nova. I think you just pinged the Drake. Come on. Oh, you pinged the Drake. Oh, and yeah. Ice Lance. Okay. That's cool. Not even Ice Lance. Ice Lance doesn't do much. You're probably getting Blade Flurry. I think just this is exactly what you want to do. Yep. Okay. I guess he's thinking about it, but I don't see it at all. Yeah, I think he's also counting damage, because what happens if he has second oil? So he has 6, 9, plus 6 more damage, 15, and a blade flirt. It's way overkill. He'd lose 6 damage, so he'd be at... How much damage would he be if he, he throws this, uh, this SI and he couldn't deal with it? Either way, there's so many ways that your opponent can pop the ice block regardless. Couldn't yeah. there? Wow, he does freeze it. Okay. Spell damage of eviscerate, eviscerate 10 plus the 6. It puts him at 1, actually. And with the other spell damage, no, you couldn't play that unless you drew a prep, I believe. 7. So this actually prevents you from getting proc'd if dog doesn't have a weapon buff. 
It doesn't seem like you have a weapon buff here. Ah, gotcha. He's going to go with the Drake, too. So that way he builds up his board a little bit more. And eviscerate the face. Sanford Thorson definitely served it. Able to get a lot deeper minions and spells would be really key. Mm -hmm. Frost Nova Tubes here is now three mana. That's crazy. All right. So from here, Shark has to figure out if he can pair together damage to win, maybe without Alex Straza. But I don't think that's likely considering that there's 11 points of heal inside the hand of Dog. Yeah, it's pretty hard to make anything out of this. He really needed an Alistraza. Might he consider just setting up Antonidas and going for freeze. a lot? Yeah, like Arcane Intellect and Freezing. And maybe pick up Alistraza and then go for the Alistraza offensively to, to try to end the game. I mean, look at that. He's got three Fireballs. I have no idea. Four, four? four fireballs and a pyroblast. Oh no, it's, it's three and a pyroblast. I think the cards are a bit like weird, but I think it's three fireballs and a pyroblast. Oh, is it? Yeah, okay. It. Right, right. So three fireballs and a pyro and a frostbolt. That's more than enough to hold this rogue over. But does he have the time to play all that? Uh, okay. Well, can you pop the ice block? I oh yeah, easily. So you just equip the oil, blade flurry, and oh, you backstab and then blade flurry, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have eviscerate to uh, pop ice block, block again. Yeah. Yep. Sounds reasonable. Oh, oh, backstab first. Okay, he's playing Thanos. Okay, so Strifeco's Ice Block gets popped, and... He only has a heal to stay alive here. Yeah, and it's even not then... not really there's... good enough, but coupled with Blizzard, uh, it is just good enough. Oh, a second Mad Scientist, right? Is that, or is that the first one? I don't remember. But either way, that Mad Scientist could be really useful to fish out secrets as well. It feels like you have to play the heal bot, right? You can't get away with just blizzarding and hoping that your opponent doesn't generate four damage. Yeah. I feel like there's some slim chance, like, Freeze Mage can come back in this situation. It is extremely unlikely, but Perhaps. I think something can happen here. Yeah, Blizzard plus Healbot seems to be the play because you set it for 12 health and your opponent can't pop you. Then you can play Mad Scientist. Apparently not. Ooh, so he's going to fireball one of the Drake then? Nope. Oh man, the greed. And this is a play for Strifeco to potentially win the game. 4, 7, 11, 12, that's, that's going to yeah, be enough. Dog takes it. Yeah, that's exactly lethal. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, know. Takes maybe the, the potential one. for fan of knives and doing draw something nice, but oh, yeah, there I it guess. is. Team Value Town taking out Cloud9. Yeah, we had a very close first series uh, in the opener, Archon versus Nylum. Um, but now with Value Town versus Cloud9, Value Town showing that dominance. And my prediction was totally wrong. I thought that Cloud9 to maybe have. Uh, an actual edge over Value Town with them being a team and working together as they have in the past. Um, but uh, no, here we are, Value Town putting up twice as many wins as Cloud9 was able to. Um, all wow. the Value Town players, you know, had just solid performances. Well, everyone played well, but the Value Towns had like uh, solid win rates. While uh, I guess just Kalento really struggled today. Really, really struggled today. 0 4 was his final score. Yeah. Yeah, it's too bad. Because um, Strifeco ended up losing a couple of times as well. But uh, Kalento was the big loser of the day, not grabbing a single win. At least every other player grabbed the win. 
uh, yep. to put under the belt. We'll probably be tracking all of those things over in the Archon Team League. But this wraps up our first day. Hope you guys enjoyed mm-hmm. it a lot. We're also going to be broadcasting tomorrow with the remaining four teams as yep. you're checking out things like standings in between. We'll be um, kicking off with uh, Force and Boys versus Tempo Storm and then uh, Celestial yeah. versus Team Liquid on, uh, in the second round. That'll be good stuff. It'll be here on uh, this channel, so make sure you hit the follow button. Uh, Crypt, do you have any final words that you want to say to close out the day? Um, well, just a uh, shout out to, to the sponsors. Thanks to G2A. Thanks to uh, Alpha Draft. Alpha Draft is a mm-hmm. fantasy team uh, for Hearthstone. They'll have their uh, their website up pretty soon, so you guys can check that out pretty soon. And uh, yeah, it's pretty entertaining. Uh, I'm sorry I was a little bit out of it. I think, uh, I think I'd have enjoyed it more if I had a few more hours of sleep uh, tonight. But uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, I definitely was impressed by uh, some play of the players that you know, a lot of people expected not to do that well, like uh, like Kibler, for instance, and uh, Ecop, Ecop, I think, was kind of struggling a little bit recently. But, you know, both of them actually had the most dominant performances today. So how about that? Sure. Uh, very cool stuff, very high-level play, and uh, a very cool system to compete in. So, uh, you know, great stuff from Archon, and uh, I hope the future will be as good as it was today. Absolutely. It's going to be great. So thank you so much for everybody who watched. Tomorrow we're going to start at 10 a.m. Pacific, uh, same time as yesterday. And I believe I'll be casting with Wreckful on, on here right. at uh, on Maz's channel. So again, make sure you hit the follow button on the channel. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you.